Loaded Nancy Drew Clue Crew. I'm Argle Fumpf, and this is the 2020 Nancy Drew Games Mega Marathon. Welcome to my latest case, The Secret of Shadow Ranch. So to this start, is game number 10, Secret of Detective. Shadow if Ranch. If you're new to adventure Yeehaw! games, need some help. Choose gameplay overview. We're going to play on Senior Detective Mode. Uh, thanks to everybody uh, who's uh, watching this live on the live stream. 245 people. Woo! That's a lot. Dear Hannah, well, I made it to Shadow Ranch, but I'm afraid all is not well. The Raleigh's, the people who own the ranch, have been called away on some kind of emergency. They had Dave Gregory, he's their foreman, pick me up at the airport. He gave me a phone number, told me to call the Raleigh's at that number as soon as I got settled in, and refused to tell me anything else. In fact, he barely said two words to me the whole ride to the ranch. What's worse, Bess and George aren't here yet. Which is very strange, because even though we had to take different flights, we figured we'd get into Phoenix at about the same time. Being here without them feels odd. After all, the Raleigh's are their aunt and uncle, not mine. I wouldn't even be here if Bess and George hadn't begged them to invite me out to the ranch for two weeks, too. Until about three months ago, the Raleigh's owned a clothing store. Bess said it was always their dream to sell the store and buy a cattle ranch. I hope they're okay, but frankly, as beautiful as Shadow Ranch is, I'm starting to get a bad feeling about this place. Love, Nancy. Okay, so Nancy's here in Arizona. Dave Gregory is very cute. However, he's being very mysterious. He, he won't talk to Nancy. He says, no, Nancy, you need to call the Raleigh's. And even though Nancy has a cell phone, she... I, I don't know. Can you use your cell phone in a car? Is it really rude to, to use your cell phone when somebody's driving you in a car? I feel like in that situation, it wouldn't have been rude for Nancy to call the Raleigh's. Raleigh really, uh, Nancy really should have called them uh, on the car ride there, right? That's, that's what I think. I think that would have been a good idea. But who knows? I don't know. Let's, let's call them Raleigh's. Yeehaw! Hello? Hello, Mrs. Raleigh. It's Nancy Drew. Nancy! Are you at the ranch? Yes, and I'm a little concerned that you're not. Nobody around here will tell me anything. That's because I told them not to. I wanted you to hear what happened from the horse's mouth, as it were. I thought you might worry otherwise. But I am worrying. I can't help but think that something terrible's happened. Oh, everything's fine. I mean, it is now. It wasn't last night, of course. Everything would have been fine last night if you hadn't made such a fuss. How could I not make a fuss? There was a rattlesnake in our bedroom, for Pete's sake. A rattler snake? Uh-oh. Don't tell me you're at the hospital. Yes, we are. Although I'm only here because Ed's here. He's the patient. I'm just here to keep him company. You can go home any time you want. Oh, someone's got to keep you out of trouble. Next thing I know, you'll be playing with scorpions. I wasn't playing with that snake. I was trying to shoo it out of the room. I told Ed to leave it alone and let one of the hands get it out of there, but no, Ed started poking at it with my yardstick, and all of a sudden it leapt up and bit him. Oh, no. Okay, so Ed is in the hospital, and that's why we won't get to see Aunt Bet, our Uncle Ed, in this game. They're just they're just living in the hospital for the next few days. They're just sort of quarantined there in Ed's hospital room after a rattlesnake bite. Okay, everybody's asking, where's the bedroom? Where's the bathroom? I'll see if I can find it. Okay, I'll take a look. Where? In the bedroom, dear. I could have sworn I mentioned that. No, Mrs. Raleigh. I mean, where did it bite him? On his arm? On his leg? Oh, on his arm, just below the elbow. Swelled up something awful. But fortunately, he's doing much better today, and the doctors think he'll be well enough to go home in a day or so. I'm well enough to go home right now. No, you're not. If I don't stay here with him, he'll get up and walk right out that door. No, I won't. What can I do to help you? Oh, nothing, dear. Absolutely nothing. You just go get a horse from Tex. He's the head wrangler. And go riding to your heart's content. I told Shorty to go ahead with the cookout I planned for tonight and... The envelope. Have her take that envelope to Mary. Oh, good idea. There's an envelope in the roll-top desk in the den marked Mary. If you could ride over to Mary Yazzie's and give it to her, we'd really appreciate it. Oh boy, we just got started and already we've got chores. I'd love to. Is there an address on the envelope? Dave will tell you how to get there. She's gonna have to get the key to the desk from him, too. Oh, that's right. I always lock the roll top. Dave has the key. 
Oh, dear. It seems like there was something else I wanted to tell you. The horse, Bet. Tell her about the phantom horse. Did he say phantom horse? Yes. You see, last night we... Hello, Mr. Raleigh. Time for those tests. Uh Uh-oh. We have to go. Don't worry about us, dear. You just go have fun. Just be sure to wear a hat and drink plenty of water. It's going to be another hot one. Bye! No, wait. Just tell me about the... Phantom horse? Yup, we got a phantom horse around here. So let's see. Um, there has to be a rest of the house somewhere, but this is just a big old living room. I, I don't, I don't see anything else here. Um, we have the bookcase. It's a cool bookcase. We've got some books to read, I guess. Here's the locked uh, roll case. Hmm. Roll top desk. Here's a puzzle. Hmm. Puzzles, puzzly, puzzly, puzzles. Still fixing up the front porch. Got to use the back door, Dave. So I imagine there's like, see this, see this wall here. So there's a separate building. We would go out through the front door and walk to the separate building that's right over here. That's where the bedroom is. That's where the bathroom is. I think that's where everything is. I'm guessing. Oh boy, guide to horses. It's the 21st century, and they still use horses? Ooh, I can't believe it. There's a quarter horse. Ooh, wow. Barrel racing. There's a painted horse. The Appaloosa was developed by the Nez Perce tribe. Yeah. Mules is a cross between a female horse and a male donkey. So, so we need to know that from uh, that's for not later the right on. Time. Must be broken. That's that's totally broken. Okay, it's a very very warm day today. High is one eighteen. So never go outside or you will instantly die. Basically. Yup. Whoa whoa whoa! Hold on a second. Schnauzer abducted from backyard. Possibly aliens as the culprit. Oh my gosh. So uh. Yeah, I think I think we found Nancy's mystery. Who cares about phantom horses? We need to save that schnauzer. That schnauzer, that poor schnauzer needs some saving. Ooh, and everybody's favorite book, Like Wind Through My Heart by Charlena Purcell. Whoa, Aunt Bet has a signed copy. Woo, oh man, is she lucky. Frances Humber. Wonder who she was. She used to own this place, I understand it. And let's listen to the radio. Phoenix and surrounding areas will be hot and dry today with temperatures expected to reach the mid-90s by 5 this afternoon. After that, temperatures will begin to drop with a nighttime low in the mid-60s. We've got several livestock auctions in the area tonight. Boring. Cows. That's the sound of happy cattle. Healthy cattle. Cattle whose diet includes Big Pink Mineral Supplement. Chelated for easy absorption. Big Pink is the perfect blend of calcium, phosphorus, magnesium. Big Pink food for cows. Think Pink, everyone. Think Pink. I love this cow. A very angry cow. And there's the sheriff. That's good. We need to call the sheriff. And guess what, everybody? It's our friend Shorty. Shorty, how's it going, sir? Hey, you must be Nancy. I'm the cook, Shorty Thurmond. Welcome to Shadow Ranch. Come on over here and tell me about yourself. You have talked to the Raleighs, right? Bet said something about a phantom horse. Do you know what she was talking about? Sure do. See, I was just about to crawl into bed last night when all of a sudden this glowing horse comes galloping up outside. It stops and rears and paws, whinnying and snorting. Then it just wheels around and gallops off into the night. It was Dirk Valentine's horse, you know. Now it's a phantom. The Phantom Horse. A Phantom Horse? Dirk Valentine was an outlaw around here back in the 1880s. Legend has it he was in love with Frances Humber. She lived right here on Shadow Ranch. Unfortunately, her daddy was the sheriff. Uh Uh-oh. Something tells me this story does not have a happy ending. Because of him, Valentine was captured and eventually hanged. Ever since, the ghost of his horse has been roaming the desert, cursing whoever sees him with bad luck. 
You don't really believe that, do you? All I know is Ed Raleigh sees the horse, and what happens less than two minutes later? He gets bit by a rattlesnake. You do the math. Yeah, the Raleigh's did not mention the fact that they saw a ghost horse like three seconds before he was attacked by a rattlesnake. Seriously. Well, I'd better get going. Pleasure talking to you. Shorty suspenders. Yay, Shorty. Ooh, recipes. Corn fritters. Mmm, yeah, yeah, making about 12 fritters. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Rattlesnake chili. Ooh, ooh. Okay, onions, pepper, beef, rattlesnake meat. I, I'm not sure I have rattlesnake meat anywhere. Should feed about six people. I don't know, just one teaspoon of cayenne pepper? Uh, two, two tablespoons of chili powder. I, I, I guess, I guess, I guess that would be uh, kind of spicy. I was expecting a bit more kick from my rattlesnake chili. Vinegar pie? What? Make a pie crust? Sugar, butter, vinegar, flour, eggs. I don't know about that. That seems strange. Uh, yeah. Okay, anyway, uh, let's, let, let's go outside. We need to meet Dave, the handsome cowboy. Howdy, Dave. Uh, how are you doing? You talk to the Raleigh's? Everybody in this game is wearing long sleeves, even though it's over 100 degrees. That is not a good idea, cowboys. Yes, I'm supposed to go ahead and have a good time and not worry about Ed, which is a lot easier said than done. He'll be okay. Getting bit by a rattler's no picnic, but it sounds like he's out of the woods. How do you think that snake got into their room? Probably crawled in through a mouse hole sometime during the day and took a nap. Night time's when they're most active. Something the Raleigh's found out the hard way. Could it have been sabotage? Dun dun dun. Could somebody have put it there? Guess it's possible. Person would have to know how to handle snakes, of course, but then if you work in the desert, that's one of the things that's good to know. Guess you're going to be asking me a lot of questions, huh? Oh, I sure am. I don't know. Why do you ask? The Raleigh said you were a detective. Their niece, Bess Marvin? She told them that, and she exaggerates. I'm going to be honest with you, ma'am. We were short a couple hands to begin with, and now with the Raleigh's gone and everybody on edge over what happened last night, well, this is not a good time to be visiting Shadow Ranch, that's all. But, but Dave, I wanted to visit and meet with you, Dave. I'm not going home. The Raleigh's asked me to take something out to Mary Yazzie's, but it's in the den in the roll-top desk, which is locked. They said you had the key? Sure do. They gave me their key ring at the hospital. Great, thanks. Okay, so this is the key to the desk? To get to Mary's shop, just follow the trail that goes northeast out of the corral. Can't miss it. And I should probably warn you, she doesn't like the Raleigh's. Why not? No idea. Not really any of my business. I'll let you get back to work. See you later. Yeah, no, uh, people are saying here that, oh, they're all wearing long sleeve shirts because they don't want to get sunburned. Uh, they, they might want to try some sunscreen. And at the very least, you shouldn't be wearing, like, a, a jacket over your long sleeves, uh, you know, if you're trying to keep cool. My antiperspirant's going to get a workout today. Woo! Ooh, okay, so I guess it's only, uh, it's only 90? Is it? It's, it's just 90. It's only 88. Okay, I guess it's not that bad. That's not 118. Okay, so we got the key to the roll-top desk. We're gonna open it right now. Oh, I should mention that uh, this is different from the previous Nancy Drew games. They changed the, uh, the, the way the screen works. Because previously you had all your inventory items over here, uh, where you could just click on them. But now we have an inventory item menu. So, the screen is also slightly bigger now, too. So there's, there's less room taken up over here at the bottom. Hmm, the Raleigh sold a trunk full of junk to Mary Yazzie. So let's see, use streamer, uh, steamer, uh, anyway, she paid 85 bucks for that, 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 um, trunk. Just because you fire me, don't make another mistake think you heard the last of me because you haven't. We all know I deserve a second chance. Let me go without giving me one was just plain wrong. Sounds like this Jane Nash person has it out for the Raleigh's. In fact, you know what your problem is? You don't believe in justice. See, I do. That's the way my brother and I were raised. Justice always prevails, although sometimes it needs a little help. You'll see, Jane Nash.
There's the letter for Mary Yazi. Uh, I mean, that's the, the envelope for Mary Yazi. I think there's something else we need to pick up right here. Woo! That's the puzzly puzzle. Uh, puzzle this. It, it's, it's right over here. So, yed, r y yellow, red, and blue. Um, those were the colors, correct? What were those colors? It opens up this thing. Yellow, red, and blue. Okay, so it looks like it's more of a light blue. So it's going to be red, blue, and then yellow. So it's going to be 12, 2, and 7. Those are the numbers. 12, 2, and 7. We're going to put these things in here. And set them to those times. 12, 2, and 7. Got it. Ooh, and this is another, this is another puzzle right here. Yes, that Jane Nash has a Nash-ty attitude. This is press the uh, buttons in the correct order. Press all the buttons in the correct order to get... Yay, this thing. And there's a picture of Frances Humber with her daddy, the sheriff, Merrill Humber. So Meryl Hummer, yep, 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 yep. So we got, we got a, the fob for uh, her watch. This doesn't look like it was ever opened. Francis, Shadow Ranch. As usual, things did not work out like I planned. Just when I get everything fixed just right for you to go looking for the thing I hid for you, I go and get myself arrested. But no matter what you hear, nothing is gonna happen to me. I will be fine and we will be together soon, I promise. Meanwhile, you can keep busy by looking for what I hid. Start by using this piece of paper to mark where all the rock pictures are. They will tell you what to do next. Your favorite flowers and the flowers on your favorites, start keeping them in mind too. I will leave a message for you in this here cell, just in case they decide to move me to the jail down in Tumbleweed or something. I like vexing your brain, because when you are thinking real hard, like when you're playing the piano, you are more beautiful than anything in the world. I am sure to be out of here before you find my treasure, but in case I am not, know that it is all yours, and that you are more precious to me than 10,000 treasures put together. 9, 12, 15, 22, 5, 25, 15, 21. Dirk. P.S. I do not, and never will, hold what your father did to me against you. So we got a secret love letter from Dirk Valentine, and he set up a couple of puzzles for her. Uh, puzzle number one, getting the message in the jail cell. Uh, puzzle number two is uh, marking all those rocks. All those rocks. Right over here. So we're gonna, we're gonna do that eventually. Oops. There's something else in there I didn't I didn't open. Yeah. We're, oh, oh, wait, wait, what? Nancy opened it automatically? Cool, I don't have to solve that puzzle a second time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, we're gonna solve those puzzles uh, eventually. I think we have to wait until day number two of the game. This game uh, comes in three days. You're more beautiful to me than anything else in the world. This is the uh, journal of Merrill Humber. July 4th, 1882 got sworn in as sheriff. It was the 4th, so it's like all them celebrations was for me, which of course they weren't. Francis thought up a song and played it on the piano for me. I forget how it went, but it was pretty. I'm lucky to have her for a daughter. Herford Shoup come by with a plant he brung from New York, which he calls Harrison's Yellow. Looked right dead to me, but Francis planted it out back, gave it some water, and already it looks to be on the mend. She's 17 and can read and write good and knows her numbers. Herford's thinking to marry her, but I said she ain't of that mind yet. So that's one of the flowers. We need to know all of her favorite flowers. That's what the other note said. So one of the flowers is Harrison Yeller. March 30th, 1883. Frances has got eyes for a young man named Dirk. She says he's from Prescott. Cappy says when she plays a piano, this Dirk makes everyone be quiet so he can hear her good. I ain't never seen her smile like she smiles now. I told her to bring him to the ranch for dinner, but 
He says he won't come because he is too shy. I wonder if that is the truth. April 16th, 1883. Got a letter from the sheriff over in Phoenix about this Dirk Valentine who was wanted for robbing two banks in a stagecoach. The picture with the letter looked just like Dirk, who Francis is sweet on. When I showed her the picture, she got tearful and run off. Now, Dirk is gone, and she won't say nothing about where he went. August 2nd, 1883. Dirk Valentine is robbing banks and coaches and trains all over the territory. Francis says he never ever shoots his gun and only steals from people that already got plenty of money. But that ain't true, because some of them trains he robbed was carrying money, meant to pay miners or hard-earned wages. He is nothing but a no-good, greedy outlaw. But Francis gets real mad when I say that. I fear she is still sweet on him, and that she sees him when she knows I am busy and gets letters from him which he hides from me. September 9th, 1883. Got hold of a note Francis sent to Dirk and saw what they was going to meet. So I got a posse and we caught Dirk and now he's in jail. The judge is coming next week and I hear he is a hanging judge so Dirk most likely ain't long for this world. Francis won't say nothing to me no more and says she never will again. September 13th, 1883. Dirk sends a secret letter to Francis, which Mason got hold of and gave to me. I locked it up so she won't ever read it. Francis ain't allowed to see Dirk in jail, of course. If she never sees his letter, maybe she will think he don't like her no more, and, and maybe she will stop liking him. Francis' ma would have known what to do better than me. I wish she was still alive. September 17th, 1883. They hung Dirk at noon. I thought I would be glad. But I ain't. September 18th, 1883. Francis took Brownie in my big saddlebag and is gone. She ain't told no one where she's going, not even Cappy. But I know she will forget, Dirk, and when she does, she will come home because she's a smart gal and, and will figure out that I, I did what I'd done for her. Oh, Meryl, Meryl, she's never coming back. January 4th, 1884. My sister says her little girl Ellie got a letter that said Francis went east and was not of a mind to ever return. I hope this ain't the truth, because I miss her something awful. June 11th, 1884. The Harrison's yellow, which Francis said was her favorite flower in the world, is just a pile of brown sticks now. I don't know how to look after delicate things like that, so it is my fault that it died. I ain't seen or heard from Francis in a year. I tell people she's on her way home, but when I look in my heart, I know this is a lie. She will never come back to Shadow Ranch, and it is my fault. I'll just have to find a way to live with it. Poor Meryl, what a sad way to end his diary, his journal. So, she went away, never came back again. She never got this letter, she never got this letter. I hope that Meryl left Shadow Ranch and went to find her, and, 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 and they were reunited. But I know in my heart that did not happen. I know in my heart that it ain't true. <laughs> oh, boy. Alright, so, uh, uh, Tex is over here. He hides inside all day. This is a really happy music, and I'm just crying. I'm so sad. Okay, Tex, howdy. So which one are you? The nice one? The Raleigh said they were going to be inviting some young ladies out here. I take it you're one of them. That's true. I'm Nancy. Yes, I'm Nancy Drew. And you are? I'm the head wrangler. You want a ride, you come to me. You prove to me you know what you're doing, I may just let you. Did you see the Phantom Horse last night? I saw something. Just what? I still ain't sure. Now if you want to ride, listen up. First thing you're gonna do is never ride unless you're wearing a hat and gloves. And unless you got a full canteen of water, you can wear that hat over there. It's Mrs. Raleigh's. Got a helmet built right in. Her gloves are on the saddle you'll be using. And you can get a canteen from Shorty. Then you're gonna saddle and bridle your horse. No need to brush them. I do that when I bring them in. Then you're going to lead him to the mountain block in the corral and mount up. Then I'm going to ask you some questions. You can't ride outside the corral till you get all the answers right. 
Once I pass your test, can I ride any time I want? Long as you talk to me first. When you're done riding, you're gonna dismount, hook your horse up, take the saddle and bridle off and put them back where you got them. Always keep your gloves with your saddle. Which horse would you like me to ride? The bay over there. Name's Bob. If you get off when you're on the trail, don't tie your reins to nothing. Just drop them. And barring an earthquake or something, old Bob will stay put. Do you know anything about the treasure that Dirk Valentine supposedly hid for his sweetheart? Nope. Figures. May I go riding now? Nope. With the Raleigh's gone, the ranch is real short-handed. Before you ride, you're gonna have to go see if Shorty's got any chores that need doing. Gotta get a canteen from him anyway. Oh. Talk to you later. Yahoo. Yahoo. So we gotta do some chores. Well, hello there. Ooh, you it's... got some friends back there? It's my horse, Bob. Hi, Bob. Hi, Bob. Hi there. You two aren't too shabby looking either. Nah, you're, you're totally shabby. Bob is the best horse. I got the best horse. Those other horses, they're just, they're just kind of boring. Hello? Nancy, hi, it's Beth and George. Hi, I'm at the ranch. Where are you guys? Yes. The airport? The airport in Phoenix? We're at the airport in Omaha, Nebraska. Our plane had to land here so they could fix some problem with the radio, and now they're saying we could be on the ground for hours. Well, at least they didn't cancel the flight. Yet. I mean, who knows what's really going on? Yeah, no one around here ever gives you a straight answer. So what's going on there? A lot. Last night, Uncle Ed and Aunt Beth found a rattlesnake in their room. Oh my gosh! Are they okay? Well, actually, it bit Uncle Ed. <gasps> Is he all right? He will be. Right now, he's in the hospital. He'll probably be there for a day or two. Aunt Beth's staying with him. Oh my gosh! And apparently a phantom horse showed up at just about the same time as that snake. A phantom horse? Of all the times to get stranded in some stupid airport. Look, you just better keep us posted, Nancy Drew. That's all I gotta say. We're so bored, George just bought a book on 19th century clothing and accessories. George did? It's the only thing in the bookstore here that looks halfway interesting. So if you need to know anything that's even remotely related to 19th century fashion, let us know, okay? Sounds good to me. So what else has been going on? Well, I've been trying on some 18th century fashion, which is not your uh, field of expertise, so don't say anything, George. So, uh, wow, phantom horse. Apparently last night, this glowing horse came galloping up out of nowhere, caused a huge commotion, then went galloping off and disappeared. It was glowing? Yep. It looked like it was glowing. You're there investigating phantom horses, and what are we doing? A big fat nothing. That does it, George. We're suing the airline. The cook, Shorty Thurman, he says the phantom horse belonged to this outlaw named Dirk Valentine, who was hanged back in the 1880s. Is this Valentine guy a phantom, too? Uh, I don't think so. Well, how come his horse got to become a phantom and he didn't? Bess, phantoms don't really exist. Okay? According to legend, seeing the horse is bad luck. I believe it. I mean, look at what happened to the guy who owned him. Phantoms don't exist. Phantoms don't drive sports cars. Don't you think it's kind of odd how that rattlesnake showed up in the Raleigh's bedroom right after that phantom horse showed up outside? You don't buy that it was an unfortunate coincidence? I think it was more like a well-planned distraction. So you're saying someone used the horse to lure everyone outside then put the snake in their room, knowing no one would be watching? It's possible, don't you think? But if you're right, it means someone wants to hurt Aunt Bet and Uncle Ed. Oh my gosh! If you're right, it means that someone is on the ranch. And whoever it is must be working with an accomplice. You know, someone to wrangle the horse. So everyone there is a suspect. That's right. Well, you don't have to sound so happy about it. But it does seem like it was... I mean, that would be a huge amount of work to put into this a distraction, right? That seems a little strange. I, I, I don't know. Well, <laughs> I think we already know the uh, answer to that question. I think the culprit is after Dirk Valentine's gold. In, in that case, it would make sense to have such a giant distraction. But if it's just to get revenge on Aunt, Aunt Bet and Uncle Ed, I, I don't think it's worth all that much work. Would you believe I found a letter that Dirk Valentine wrote to Francis Humber? No way. 
It was locked up in this chest that belonged to her father, and the letter was never opened. According to his journal, her father intercepted it and locked it away before Francis could read it. So did you read it? Of course she did. I mean, she better have. The letter may explain what the deal is with that phantom horse. What'd the letter say? Well, evidently Dirk wanted Francis to have the loot he'd stashed, so he set up this elaborate treasure hunt for her. The letter contained all sorts of weird, obscure clues to help her find what he'd hidden. But if the letter was never opened, Francis couldn't have found the treasure. Oh my gosh, it could still be out there. And someone could be using that phantom horse to chase the Raleighs off the ranch because they want to be the ones to find it. We're stuck here when we could be there with you looking for hidden loot? That does it, George. We're suing the airline and the airport. <laughs> Also, I feel kind of dumb now because I, I thought I was having a really smart brainwave uh, about the treasure, and then Nancy instantly says the exact same thing I said. That's it for now. Stay in touch. That's an order. I guess I was not being as clever as I thought. Okay, time. Okay, gang. It's time for chores. Hey there, Nancy. Man, I wish the Raleighs were here. Me too. Me too. It'll be nice to talk to them in person. I'm really looking forward to you and me sitting down and having a nice conversation. Especially with all the weird stuff that's going on. I'm so busy getting all their chores done in addition to my own that I barely have time to talk to myself. Let alone to you. Enough of me complaining. What's up? Oh no, he already hates doing chores and Nancy's going to volunteer to do them? He's just going to make Nancy do everything. Tex said I should get a canteen from you and see if there are any chores you'd like me to do. Music to my ears. First thing you can do for me is go out to the garden and pick all the ripe vegetables. You know what ripe vegetables look like, don't you? No. No, but don't worry, I'll find out. Good, because if you pick vegetables that aren't ripe yet, I'll be real ticked. You can put them in the vegetable basket that's hanging outside. And one more thing. Sometime today, I need you to build a cooking fire in the pit outside. I'll light it when I'm ready to start cooking. And be sure to fill the bucket out there with water and leave it by the pit. You know, just in case something catches on fire that isn't supposed to. The Raleighs wanted to have a cookout tonight, and by golly, we're gonna have a cookout no matter who is or isn't here. Well, I'd better get going. Drop by any time. I'm already crying because he's got a bunch of chores for us, and they're like two extra chores he didn't mention. Uh -huh. Okay, so extra chore number one he didn't mention is cutting firewood. Okay, so I think we want to have uh, uh, we want to hit it from this angle and we want to stand here. Smash! Okay, number two, it looks like, uh, well, it looks like we're gonna hit this, uh, from the right, and we're gonna have to be standing here. Okay. Uh, this one looks like we hit it straight on, and we stand in the upper right. This is an easy enough chore. There, just call me Nancy Paul Bunyan Drew. Woohoo! Yeah, Shorty claims he's doing chores, but it looks more like he's standing all day, um, stirring an invisible pot, not really doing anything. Oh yeah, here's 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 more of that ranch. We got this big part of the ranch that Nancy can't explore. I assume that's where some of the bedrooms are. And we have to pick up sticks for the uh, fire. Fill this with water. The music is pretty good. I like it. Hmm. There is clearly nothing suspicious hidden here. Nope. Nothing suspicious at all there. Okay. Good to know. Let's see if we can find some more firewood. Ah, there's some. Forget how many pieces of firewood we need to find, like three or four or five. Whoa, hold on a second. Hold on just one second there. That looks like a ton of firewood right there. They've already got a ton of firewood. Why did Nancy need to cut all the firewood when they've got a huge pile of firewood just ready and waiting to be used? 
not fair, Shorty. Not fair. Sorry. Sorry. I I I I shouldn't have. I I I I'm sorry. I lost control. Um. That that was. Uh, <clears throat> that was. Uh, that was irresponsible. I'm sorry. I apologize. Uh, let's check the internet. Nancy's phone has internet. Yay, Nancy has a smart phone. So, uh, harvesting vegetables. Let's look at these beef steaks. Beef steak tomatoes. Okay, beef steak is red when it's ripe. So we've got those beef steak tomatoes there. Two of them are red, so they must be ripe. And what about these golden queens? Orange yellow when ripe. Okay, so orange yellow, red. Now let's check uh, what's up with this black turtle. Which doesn't even kind of look like a turtle. Black turtle. I don't see it anywhere. Black turtle. Okay, here's black turtle. Okay, black turtle. Um, they, they look like snap beans. The pods are dried until they're crisp. Because a plant stops producing if it's picked, do not pick them. The pod on the left, the pod in the middle. Okay, so we want this one, the little gray weird thingy. The, the gray weird thingy, and that's for black turtle. I don't see any which look like the, the gray weird thingy. Ah, I found them here. Gray weird thingy, gray weird thingy. Uh, now we need old ivory egg and northern lights. This is the intended way to solve the puzzle. This, this kind of takes forever. Really wish you didn't have to click like seven times to get back to where you were. So old ivory egg. Let's see what that rule is. Okay, northern lights are bicolored. And this one's really tricky. So when it says bicolored, it doesn't mean this one. It means these red, red and yellow ones. So red and yellow northern lights. And ivory egg is golden white. Golden white like that. None of them are golden, but these are bicolored. And there's a cow. Hi, cows! Cowie, 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 cow. It's so hot, I should get these vegetables into Shorty right away. Yes, you should. Let's see. Um, uh, aha! I knew there was some firewood there. I think if I turn around, there's some firewood here. Good. Maybe I have all the firewood I need. So, let's go inside. Do you think I did it? Do you think I got uh, all the uh, vegetables correct? Pick those vegetables for me yet? We'll find out. You betcha. Some of this stuff's overwrapped, but I'll just pitch it. Oh. Now, second thing I need you to do for me is take this, go out to the chicken coop and fill it up with eggs. Just be careful of that basket. It's kind of old. Kind of old. And don't forget to build me that campfire like I asked. You got it. Okay, I built that campfire. Fantastic. So now we need to uh, get the eggs. Like I said, Shorty didn't tell us all of his chores. He's got surprise chores. The egg stuff. I don't see any eggs. I see no eggs anywhere. They're not here. Ah, found them. Oh, no. There's a hole in it. So you want to right click to rotate the pieces here. You want the pieces to fit into place and you want them to uh, match the pattern. I don't think that was it. Okay, so let's see. Um, hmm. That looks fantastic. That looks like it matches the pattern. This piece has a pointy end, so it must go up here with the pointy end. Yeah, yeah. So this pattern, it looks like it's... This, maybe? No. Like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's hard to see that top one. It's hard to see it. When you get a piece into place correctly, it can't be moved again. So that, that makes it somewhat easy. Makes it a mite easier to solve the puzzle. Let's see. 
There we go. This puzzle isn't too bad. Okay, that goes upside down like that, and then that goes like that. There. Am I good or what? Woohoo! Yeah, Shorty gave Nancy a broken basket Voila! to begin with. That was a mean trick. You really shouldn't have done that. That was a not nice thing for Shorty to do. I need to get some paper for the fire. I already saw that, but uh, here's some interesting news. Bank robbers? There are bank robbers in the area! Bank robbers, yes. Very scary. Very scary indeed, bank robbers. Let's talk to Dave. Hello, Nancy. Something I can do for you? I talked to my friends, Bess and George. Their plane's been delayed. They aren't sure when they're going to get here. Sorry to hear that. Well, to be honest, I'm not, really. Driving back and forth to the airport takes a lot of time, and time's one thing we're all running kind of short of around here. I found a letter that may have been written by Dirk Valentine to Francis Humber way back in the 1880s. What do you know about them? I know there's a painting of her over in the ranch house, and that's about it. Why? What'd the letter say? The letter made it sound like Dirk was sending Francis on some kind of treasure hunt. Well, if the guy did hide something, it's probably long gone by now. How long have you worked here? About as long as the Raleigh's have lived here. About three months, I guess. I was their first hire. First me, then Tex, then Shorty. That Shorty sure likes to talk, doesn't he? He does his job, and he does it good. Far as I'm concerned, that's all that's important. I'll let you get back to work. See you later. He does his job. He does it good. Uh, no, he don't. No, he don't. He forces Nancy to do his job. Nancy's doing all his chores. Okay, and I think we've got all the eggs, right? How many eggs do I have? One, two, three, four, five. Okay, there's another egg, I think, here. Ow! 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 Yikes! Maybe I'll come back when she's not in such a foul mood. It's the Chicken of Doom, everyone! Ow! 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 I know that chicken, dear. She only becomes aggressive when she's provoked. Were you provoking her? I was just kind of playing with her. Playing with or teasing? I guess it was more like teasing. We can't have people taunting the chickens, dear. It makes them less productive and just plain mean. And if you have to be told not to pick on some poor defenseless, well, relatively defenseless creature, I'm afraid you're not the type of person that's welcome at Shadow Ranch. Your hen hassling days are over, Nancy. Bye. Yeah, so Nancy gets fired when the chicken kills her, basically. Uh, I, I don't think Nancy should be fired. I, I would blame the chicken for anything and everything bad that happens on this ranch. I think that chicken is the culprit. Oh, were you playing with the chicken? No, I was trying to get eggs and it attacked me. You can find more eggs than that. I can? Okay. So you need to leave and come back. That chicken will leave. Hopefully. I think that's it for all the eggs. I think we're done with all those eggs. Moo. 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 Start this fire. Wonder who wrote this? That's the top secret it's hidden message. It's a fire pit. It's a fire pit. Okay, we put these things so there. So far, so good. Then we put these things there. That should do it. Yeah. Then we put these things there. There. One extremely well-built campfire, if I do say so myself. Great looking fire, Nancy. Nice job. Yeah, Nancy shouldn't be fired. The chicken should be fired. Let's put down this heavy bucket full of water. Great, so we finished that chore. I think we're all done with Shorty's chores. Only took me, what, 50 minutes? I got it done. Got those eggs for me? Right here. Good for you. Anything I can do for you now? 
Do you think I could get a canteen of water from you? Got one right here. You're good to go. Well, I'd better get going. Drop by any time. Yeah. Miss yeah. Nancy, how may I be of service? Well, I'd better get going. Don't be a stranger. Perhaps we could have barbecued chicken tonight. Yum yum. Sweet as the smell of fried chicken. Mm. I mean, I, it, it, chicken, chicken is a uh, uh, normal for a barbecue, right? Right? Okay, so let's talk to Tex. Need something? May I go writing now? Yep. If you got everything I told you you need, and you think you know your stuff when it comes to horses, old Bob's all yours. It is impressive that Shorty knew exactly when Nancy was finished making the fire. Shorty has really good timing. That, that seems to be the only time Shorty leaves the house is to say, Hey, good fire! Talk to you later. No hurry. So we get to pass the quiz. Hold on a second. I need to get um, this. Yep. Hmm. And this hat. Gonna put this on top of Bob. Pull that thingy up, and then pull that thingy tight. I know so much about horses. Come on, Bob. So, yeah, I'm really good at that. I could totally pass this horse challenge. I'm ready. Ready for some questions? I think so. Where's the horse's hocks? Um, well, hawks sounds like socks, and you wear socks on your feet, so just above the hooves? Just above its hooves. Nope. Oh! Ask me something else. Where's the horse's frog? Uh, I don't know. Oh, oh, we get to see the rest of Shadow Ranch here in the background. You get to see it, the, the place where we have all the, uh, the rooms and such. The rooms that Nancy doesn't get to explore. Okay, frog, uh, it's, uh, the hoof. On the bottom of its hoof. That's one out of ten. Ask me something else. How tall is a horse that's 15 hands? That's, uh, five feet. Five feet. Two out of ten. Got a long way to go. Ask me something else. What kind of a horse is a Paso Fino? Quarter? A quarter horse. Nope. No. Ask me something else. How can you tell if a horse is colican? It whinnies. It whinnies all the time. Nope. Ow. Ask me something else. What's the difference between a bay and a chestnut? I don't know. A chestnut has black points. Nope. I don't know any of these things. Ask me something else. What tribe bred the first Appaloosas? Oh, I saw that earlier. The Nez Perce. The Nez Pierce. Three down, seven to go. Oh, I guess it's pronounced Pierce. Ask me something else. What part of a horse is most likely to be hurt when it founders? Stomach? It's stomach. Nope. Ask me something else. What part of the saddle should you always check before you head out on the trail? The thingy. I, I just did that. The thingy. The cinch. That's four right. Okay, I guess thingy is called cinch. Yeah, text just stands in place without moving. Ask me something else. What is a mule? Oh, oh man. It was, it was a female horse, male donkey? The offspring of a female horse and a male donkey. That's fine. You're halfway there. Woohoo! Ask me something else. Where's the horse's hocks? Well, I know it's not the hooves, so let's go with the uh, knees. Just below its knees. Nope. Ask Whoops. me something else. Where's the horse's hocks? Oh, hey, he's giving me another chance. Uh, front legs? On its front legs. Nope. Oh, come on. Ask me something else. Where's the horse's hocks? <laughs> back legs. On its back legs. Bingo. That was number six. I love how he'll just let Nancy keep guessing until she gets it right. Ask me something Woo! else. What kind of a horse is a Paso Fino? Well, it's on a quarter horse. Let's go with paint. A paint horse. Nope. Ask me something else. What kind of a horse is a Paso Fino? A gated horse. Seven down. You're in the home stretch. Woohoo! Ask me something else. How can you tell if a horse is colican? The lying down? It keeps lying down, then standing up. Eight right. Just two to go. Ask me something else. What's the difference between a bay and a chestnut? A bay has black points. This here's your final question. Woo! Woo! I'm ready. What part of a horse is most likely to be hurt when it founders? Feet. It's feet. Well, you answered all the questions, Woo! right? 
and I can tell by the way you sit you ain't gonna go falling off for no good reason. So you're free to ride outside the corral. Just don't go galloping all over the place. Because if you bring old Bob back all hot and sweaty, you can kiss your cowgirl days at Shadow Ranch goodbye. Okay, he sort of threatens that, but uh, I don't think that ever happens. I don't think I don't think it's possible. Okay, Bob, what do you say we do some sightseeing? I don't think it's possible for uh, Bob to come back all hot and sweaty, sweaty and hot. Uh, yeah, let's go to Mary's Gifts. Let's go inside and meet Mary Yazzie. Hi, can I help you? My name's Nancy Drew. I'm staying at Shadow Ranch. I'm Mary Yazzie. I heard what happened last night. Tough break for the Raleighs. Getting that place going has been a real struggle for them. How did you hear about it? Word gets around. You probably know everyone in the valley, don't you? Oops, I almost forgot. Bet wanted me to give you this. Great. I want to buy a small piece of property from them. It must be their response. Bad news? They rejected my offer. Well, I guess that's that. But as long as you're here, look around. All the jewelry you see, all the rugs, the beadwork, the pottery, they were all made by local artists, including yours truly. So if you want to know something, especially if you want to know how much something is, just ask. So, hey, do you know where the petroglyphs are? I need to find them in order to solve this mystery. Are there many petroglyphs around here? If you take the trail to Cougar Bend, there are hundreds. A lot of them were probably made by the Anasazi. They lived in the area until about 700 years ago, when they just suddenly picked up and left. I understand that you bought a trunk full of junk from the Raleighs recently. Yeah, they didn't want much for it, so I took it off their hands. Problem is, I still don't know what's in it because I can't figure out how to open it. May I take a look at it? Sure, it's right over there. It was great talking to you. Catch you later. Alright, so we get to do both those things, and we also have this, uh, a puzzle. Here, I want to show this off. So we win this token if we solve this puzzle. Let's do it. It's just like the bees and knees game, uh, from game number five. Uh, Nancy drew the final scene. Ow! Except instead of cool music, we get, we get, we get eaten by coyotes. Okay, Roadrunner needs to move like that to lure the coyotes far enough to the left so they can't block this pathway to the, to the hole. Let's see if I can remember how you do this. I think you have to go up, down, and around maybe? Yeah, like that. Yeah, yep, 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 yep. Just like that, that way the uh, coyotes follow on the Roadrunner. A coyote's never gonna get that Roadrunner. Roadrunner's just too, too fast. <laughs> Level three, as tricky as can be. Whoops. I've got myself stuck. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> oh dear. Uh, let's see, what if I go up like this? Oh, see, only one coyote moved that time. Well, that's just not fair. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, yeah, because this is the last one, this is the most difficult one. I feel like I feel like that uh, what what I did earlier was the, probably the best one going up like this. Now the two coyotes are next to each other. So I can go like this. Yeah, but now the coyotes split up. See, 
They split up. And on account of their splitting up, that makes it really, really difficult for this to work. Maybe if I go down and around like this. Yeah, these coyotes are just way too smart for me. What if I go down from the start? Like this. Just get those coyotes stuck there. Stuck there. Yeah. Then that coyote on the right doesn't doesn't get stuck. Hmm, let's see if we can figure this out. So if I go all the way left here. Nope, because then the one coyote chases me and the other one doesn't. As we've seen. Hmm. Gosh, I don't quite know how to solve this puzzle. And those are some tricky, tricky coyotes. Yeah, yeah, why don't they both move in sync like that? Come on, coyotes. I have to do something silly. Go down and around this. Yep, I don't know how to avoid that one coyote on the right. That one coyote on the right just keeps messing up. Yeah, if I go all the way up here, see, they go all the way up too. They don't go left or right. Whoa, wait, wait a minute. Was that it? That was it, everyone. That was it. An old token, or something. Yeehaw! And Charlena Purcell, she has a phone number. Yep, so we can call her. Let's see, we can also take a look at this. The tuning forks, cool! Antique tuning forks belong in the Francis Humber. Petroglyph pictures. That trunk looks really old. Would you mind if I try to get this open? Please do. In fact, if you get it open, I'll let you keep something from it. You can have your pick. So what we do now is we call, we call uh, Charlena Purcell. She gives us the clue for opening that treasure chest. Thank you for holding, and thank you for calling the office of Charlena Purcell. Miss Purcell's latest novel, like Wind Through My Heart, was an instant bestseller. And like so many of her novels... <sighs> never mind. Aww, what? Hmm. I thought we were supposed to call her for help. Let's try that. You put these things in here. If I could find out who made the initials on this trunk, whose are they? Do you know? I have no idea. Okay, maybe now I can call Charlena Purcell? Perhaps I didn't take a look at it uh, enough. 
Charlene of Purcell's office. Hi, my name is Nancy Drew. May I please speak to Miss Purcell? Concerning? I'm staying at a ranch in central Arizona, and since she knows so much about the history of Arizona, I thought maybe she could answer some questions for me. Questions concerning? Well, I came across a very old trunk that might contain stuff that has to do with these people named Dirk Valentine and Francis Humber. Only I can't open it. Did you say Dirk Valentine? And his girlfriend, Francis Humber, yes. Ah. Oh, would you hold, please? Thank you for holding, and thank you for calling the office of Charlena Purcell. Miss Purcell's latest novel, like Wind Through My Heart, was an instant bestseller. And like so many of her novels, it recently received the Catherine Coop Award for Historical Excellence. Reading a Charlena Purcell novel is like traveling through time to the Old Southwest on the wings of love. This is Charlena. Who is this again? Uh, Nancy Drew? Tell me about the trunk you found. Well... To open it, I need to put these wrenches in these three holes. But I don't know in which directions they need to be pointing. That does sound like it came from the Humber family. Is there any kind of picture on it? Yes, as a matter of fact, there's this kind of abstract design made up of hearts and doves and the initials E-H and A-H. E-H would be Eldridge Humber and A-H would be Abigail Humber, Francis Humber's grandparents. The picture no doubt commemorates their wedding day, which was... April 9th, 1811. Those numbers must have something to do with the directions in which those wrenches need to be pointing. I'm afraid I wouldn't know. In the course of my research, I've only read about the trunks Merrill and Eldridge Humber handcrafted. I've never actually opened one. However, I've been running across fascinating tidbits concerning the Humber family and stashing them away for years. When I have enough tidbits stashed away, I may well write a book about them. Then you'd probably be very interested to know what's in this trunk. Yes, I would. And since I've helped you, or tried to, it's only fair that you help me, don't you think? Sure, I'll keep you posted. Did I mention that I'm staying at Shadow Ranch? This just gets better and better. I'll tell my assistant to put your calls through immediately. By the way, why are you so interested in the Humbers? Knowing more about them and what happened in the past may help me figure out something that's going on in the present. I'm kind of a detective. That makes two of us. I'll be waiting to hear from you. Okay, so she gave us the numbers we need. They should be here in my notes. Somewhere in these notes. Come on, come on, Nancy, where are they? Well, it's April something, 1911 is what I, that's what I heard, 1811, sorry, 1811, not 1911, so April is 4, so 4, and then 11 is this, I got the trunk open, Woo! great, thank you, go ahead and take something from it, you deserve a reward, Scissors, sheriff badge. Eh, I don't need that. I need this. <laughs> so we take a look at it and we open it with the fob we got earlier. Bingo. F H. Francis Humber. Bingo, bingo, bongo. Let's do this. One, three, five, seven. Okay, it's seven, nine, eleven. Seven, nine, five. No, seven. Nine one uh seven nine three five seven nine three one seven nine three eleven five one Woo Okay so we opened it inside we have Green bottle under Hmm wonder what that means Green bottle under I don't really need that anymore. Can I switch now? Can I get can I get this instead? Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna take. Can I keep my sheriff's badge? Are you guys okay with me keeping the sheriff's badge, or should I grab the frying pan? If I want something else from the trunk, I should put back what I took before. Or do I want the scissors? This this is very this is very this is very complicated. But let's see what the others look like inside my inventory. 
Yeah, there we go. Okay, so the frying pan looks like that. Woo! Maybe Shorty can use it. Scissors, though. Ooh, wow, wow. I wonder what I could use those scissors for. I don't think there's anything I can use the scissors for. Can I pick up the uh, other thing, this thing here on the right? No. 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 Okay, so we've got one vote for the frying pan, one for the badge, two, two frying pan, two badge, three pan. Nobody likes the scissors. Uh, let's go with the frying pan then. It's a very tough decision, isn't it? Just, just so tough. The frying pan will definitely protect me, yes. The culprit tries to attack me, I will use the frying pan to hit the culprit. That's 100% what Nancy's going to have to do. So here we are at Cougar Band. And here we have uh, those those petroglyphs. So like that petroglyph was on top of that thingy. Woohoo! Oh! We have an arrowhead. I believe we have like two arrowheads to find here, unless I'm mistaken. There's a monkey thing. I was there in that rock. And then this is up here in that rock. It looks like we've got some which are up here. Hmm. Which I can't reach right now. I need a rope in order to reach it. So... I'm sorry to say that's it, everyone. That's all we can do with the, uh... With here at the moment. Another arrowhead. Arrowhead number two. Is there another arrowhead up here? Oh, okay, no, but we've got some sun. Nah, that's not right. Uh, let's see. So the sun is on this rock. Let's see. Yeah, there we go. If that's the sun, then that's, uh, I mean, sorry. Sun and handprint. Handprint. That's the one that's throwing me off. Okay, and then this one here is a bird. And I did not see the others. All I saw was the bird. Okay, so it's this thing to the left. Bird there. And this one there. Now we need to find, uh, the, this S one. Um, S-A. Hmm. So depending on where you put uh, the, uh, these petroglyphs, that's where you get different, different things. Where is the one I'm looking for? Here? Here. Okay. So like if I put it here, it's AT. But if I put it here, well then it would be SA. Well, be NAS? No, that's not a word, but... Beneath is a word, so this is going to be an H there. And once we get all the, the petroglyphs in place, we'll have that puzzle solved. Great. Okay, so uh, uh, all done with this area for now. Bob is just standing there patiently. And we can find four arrowheads here. One. Heck, why walk when I can ride? Two. Three. Four. Heck, why walk when I can ride? Nancy refuses to go too far in any direction. Here lies Charlie, best mule will ever live. Never kick me or nothing. January 1881. And here we have a rattler. Do you hear the rattling sound? You can. Ah! Oh, Nancy gets bitten by a rattlesnake. Poor Nancy. 
go back to Shadow Ranch. I think we're done with everything here for the day. I do think we're done with, with, with it for the day. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure we're, we're finished for now. And it should be nighttime. Time to have a, a cookout. Oh, I've got to put my stuff away. Uh-oh. And wait, what's put this? That back. Coco Kringle bar? Um, uh, pliers? And a letter to text from Jay Nash. Happy birthday! Oh my gosh, Jay Nash is Tex's sister. I can't believe I got a real life cowboy for a brother. Your little sister, Jay Nash. Yes, Jane, the one who sent that angry letter to the Raleigh's. Texas sister. And for some reason that was hidden inside Zeke's saddlebag. Who's Zeke? What, what are you talking? Dex! 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 You got some explaining to do! You still here? Should I be somewhere else? Yeah. Home in your nice soft Betty Bye. You and your friends, if they ever show up. You ain't gonna last more than three days out here. Why do you say that? City folk can't take living out here. Too rugged, too much work, too dangerous. Really, Tex? Really? I don't think it's that tough. I need a rope. Do you think I could borrow yours? Nope. Why not? I understand you have a sister named Jane Nash. So what if I do? Well, she is a suspect. I found a pretty nasty letter from someone named Jane Nash in the Raleigh's desk. That don't mean it was my sister. Hey, you've been snooping, haven't you? In the Raleigh stuff, in my stuff. I'm just very observant, that's all. My business ain't none of your business. And that includes any sisters I may or may not have. You need to go. I'm busy. Oh, oh he's mad at me now. Doesn't want to hang out with me and now it's not time. And she'll be coming around the mountain when she goes. You old lady. I can't take any more. Where are you going? You can't leave. The Raleigh said we were to have a cookout and entertain our guest. Yeah, well, I don't call this entertainment. It's worse than whatever that stuff was you cooked. That was lamb ragu for your information, and it was great. If you couldn't appreciate it, it's because your taste buds are about as sophisticated as a sand fleas. I think I'll turn in, too. Night, ma'am. Next time, just stick to burgers. Et tu, Brute? You see that? You see what I put up with? Day in and day out, I cast my culinary pearls before ungrateful, uncultured swine. Well, I'll show them. I'll write a best-selling cookbook, that's what I'll do. Then I'll get my own TV show, then I'll do a movie, and while they're out here punching cattle, I'll become a gazillionaire. Yeah, because there are so many movies based on Oh my gosh! Whoa! It's a phantom horse! <gasps> and as soon as it appears, boom! That thing just explodes. And you say this happened right after that phantom horse showed up again? The pump house blew just as the horse was galloping away. Oh, my, this is awful. Maybe Shorty was right. Maybe that horse is a bad omen. That's what someone wants you to think, Aunt Bet. What do you mean? It's possible that while everyone's attention was on that horse, someone sabotaged the pump house. Why on earth would someone sabotage the pump house? Someone may be trying to chase you off the ranch. But why? That I don't know, yet. You don't think Tex or Shorty or Dave is somehow involved, do you? It's possible, but I just don't know yet. Oh, my. You might not be safe there. Maybe we should send her home. I'll be fine. Really, I want to help, and I can help. Well, it sounds like we could certainly use your help. Can you think of anyone who might have a grudge against you? No, but I'll tell you what. Ed and I will put our thinking caps on, and if anything comes to us, we'll call you. Have you called the sheriff and told him all this? Not yet. Tell her about the storms. 
Tell me about the what? The storms. You need to be careful when you go riding because it can be sunny one minute and pouring down rain the next. I'll be careful. Good. And if you have any more questions, just call. One more thing. Until I figure out what's going on, it would probably be a good idea not to mention my suspicions to anyone at the ranch. Of course. Keep in touch. I will. Bye. <laughs> That's kind of silly, Nancy's like, oh, can you think of anybody who might want revenge on you? No. What about Jay Nash? She might want revenge. She sent you an angry letter. Phoenix and surrounding areas will be hot and dry today with temperatures expected to reach the mid-90s by 5 this afternoon. That totally sounds like Dirk Valentine. We've got several livestock auctions. Are these the same things we saw, I mean, we heard on the previous day of the game? Phoenix and surrounding areas will be hot. We've got several livestock Yeah, we've only got, they, they only have three different radio stations in Arizona. Hey, where'd Shorty go? Shorty, I don't see Shorty anywhere. Can I use my, uh, can, can I use my pan on Shorty's thing? Oh, 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 no, no, I guess I can't, but I can, uh, look at this. Mineral deposits? Mineral deposits. Sunny June Ridge, Rutherford Peak, Kringle Mountain, Shadow Mountain, Rattlesnake Mine. Ooh, I want to go there. Can I help you find something? No, actually, I pretty much found everything on my own. For your information, I got those maps because I was hoping there might be a long-lost gold mine or two around here. But like most of my get-rich-quick ideas, it didn't pan out. Apparently, there's no gold left in them thar hills. Or silver, or copper, or anything else. Now, I don't ever want to catch you in my stuff again. I'm sorry, Shorty. I didn't mean to snoop. Yes? I'm embarrassed that you caught me snooping through your stuff. Just proves we're birds of a feather. I've been known to go poking through other people's stuff myself. Have you ever met Mary Yazzie? Course. Nice lady. I mean, for the most part. Gets real unfriendly when the subject of the Rowleys comes up. What about Dave Gregory? He's so quiet, I can't tell if he's being secretive or just shy. My money's on shy. I mean, it kind of takes brains to be secretive, and he strikes me as being pretty much a lightweight in that department. Know what I mean? Oh, Nancy, it's great having you here. I mean, I like to talk, you know? I like to converse, to debate, to discuss. Did Shorty just say Dave is stupid? Is that honestly what you just said, Shorty? Oh, he's just kind of a lightweight when it comes to being smart. He's too stupid to, to, to actually be secretive, so he must just be shy. Wow, Shorty. Wow. You like to gossip, don't you? More than anything. Which isn't a bad thing. People like you and I are fascinated by the human condition, that's all. So, who else do you want to talk about? Uh, nobody really. Hey, 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 why, why don't you gossip about the Raleigh's? Why don't you tell us bad stuff about the Raleigh's? You can say mean things about them, yeah? Have you been out to the pump house? All the water to the ranch house has been cut off. The livestock will still get water from the windmills, but we humans are going to have to get every single drop of water we use from the faucet in the pump house. And that's going to be a royal pain. Why can't that darn horse do its cursed thing somewhere else? I'm inclined to think that someone, not something, is responsible for the damage to the pump house. I saw the pipe. It was rusted through. That's why it burst. That and bad vibes from that equine banshee. Got any chores you want me to do? Do exactly what you did for me yesterday, and I'll be forever grateful. Start by picking all the ripe stuff in the garden again. Baskets outside. Well, I'd better get going. Come back soon. Everybody in the chat is screaming at Shorty right now for being mean to Dave. Dave does not deserve that. Dave does not deserve to be treated that way. Dave is a good feller. And he's also not here right now. I don't know why, where he went, actually. Can I get some eggs? Oh, I guess I can't get eggs. I guess we need to do the uh, vegetables first. But also, we need to we need to call the sheriff. So as Shorty said, uh, there's no water in the main house. All the water is now here in this pump house, which is weird because wasn't the pump house the thing that exploded, not the main house? Ah, whatever. 
SWGS. This is Gaza. Hi, my name is Nancy Drew. Not too long ago, you provided this person I know with a map that showed the locations of mineral deposits in central Arizona. That's what I'm here for. Is there any chance you might remember talking to that particular person? I might. We got a lot of maps on Arizona mineral deposits, though. Know which one it was? The number on it was PUB893A. Publication 893 Alpha. Let me put it up on my screen here. Last person I mailed a copy to was Shorty Thurman. That's your friend? Yes, as a matter of fact, it is. According to my notes, he just started a job in the Shadow Mountain area and figured he'd go looking for gold on his off hours. You keep notes on all the calls you get? In a bureaucracy like this one, you never know. When something goes south and fingers start pointing, it's always good to have your side of the story all nice and documented. How likely do you think it is that Shorty will find any gold around Shadow Mountain? Oh, he might find a nugget or two, but from the looks of the maps I sent him, any ore out there would be of such low quality that attempting to extract gold from it would be pointless. That's interesting. What is? Apparently this Shorty person asked me if I knew anything about Dirk Valentine's treasure. Really? Do you remember what he said? As I recall, he'd heard a rumor that some outlaw had buried some kind of treasure near Shadow Mountain. He thought it might be in an old mine shaft or something. And what did you tell him? Nothing. I didn't know anything about it. Well, thank you, Gaza. No problem. What did you say your name was again? Nancy... Drew. Nancy Drew. Asked a lot of questions. Didn't buy any maps. But she really appreciated your taking the time to talk to her. Be sure to put that in your notes, too, okay? Got it. Goodbye, Miss Drew. Bye. That was kind of a useless phone call. Oh, well. We're sorry. Your call cannot be completed as dialed. Question mark? Check the number Who did you call? Again. This is a recording. Okay, so uh, we need to call the sheriff. That's, that's who we're calling. Hernandez. Hi, are you the sheriff? Yes, ma'am. My name is Nancy Drew. I'm staying at Shadow Ranch. Oh, yeah? I spent a good part of last night out there. What's your take on what happened to the pump house? Looked to me like the main pipe had been deteriorating for some time, only nobody noticed until last night when it finally blew. So you think it was an accident? I see no reason to think otherwise. Would it be all right if I looked around in the pump house? Sure. I'm all done in there. Should I have my deputy take that sign down? Mind my asking why you want to look around? Wait a minute. Dave told me about you. You're the girl detective. Amateur detective. I don't know. Dave seemed to be real impressed with you. In more ways than one, I might add. Ooh, Dave thinks Nancy's smart and cute. Do you know most of the men who work at Shadow Ranch? I know them all. That doesn't mean I'm best buddies with them, but it's a pretty small world out here. And I've either known or known of those boys for years. And they're all stand-up guys, as far as you know? I'd vouch for every single one of them. Thanks for your help. Just doing my job. Sounds good. Okay, so we can explore here. This is where they're getting water from now on, I presume. Looks like the pipe was pretty badly corroded. It was rusted shut. And here's an arrowhead. So, hey, wait! I thought there was nothing suspicious here. Turns out there is! Hidden passageway. So Nancy crawls through the hidden passageway to reach the basement. And who should she find but... Dave? Well, where did you come from? Where did you come from? Well, see, I just... I mean... I'm looking for Dirk Valentine's treasure. Then you lied to me earlier. Then you lied before when you said you didn't know who Dirk Valentine was. Yes, ma'am. See, my great aunt Ellie was Francis Humber's cousin. When she died, she left me a bunch of stuff, including an old letter she'd gotten from Francis. In the letter, Francis said that Valentine had hidden a bunch of loot somewhere and wanted Francis to find it by following the clues he left for her. Francis was real smart, see? Loved puzzles. Played the piano pretty good, too. Anyway... After Valentine met his end, Francis was too broken-hearted to care about some treasure. She told Aunt Ellie that if she could find it, she could keep it. I also found this picture. That's Francis's father, Sheriff Merrill Humber. There's something written on the back. Stairs to cellar. That's Francis's handwriting. Looks like the other half of the message got torn off. I was hoping that the treasure might be under the stairs in here, but... 
No such luck. So Dave's trying to find the treasure himself. How long have you been digging around down here? About a week. Mostly late at night or whenever I could sneak away. I come and go through a secret entrance. These stairs lead to a secret door behind the bookcase in the den. A secret door? The Raleigh's never mentioned a secret door. The Raleigh's don't know. I was afraid that if I told them they'd... See, my brother's dead broke. No job, health's bad. I was thinking if I could just find the treasure... I understand, but now I'm in kind of an awkward position. I know, and I'll tell them, I swear, soon as they come back. They got enough on their minds right now. So, Dave, are you the culprit? You haven't been using that phantom horse to try to scare the Raleigh's off so you can hunt for Valentine's treasure in peace? I don't know anything about that horse or any of the other stuff that's been going on around here, I swear. Now, if you'll pardon me, I need to tend to my chores. No, wait. You don't have to leave. Yeah, he left. He's gone. He's gone. This is a puzzle. That's a puzzle we'll solve later. Acid. Wonder what somebody's been using that for. What if acid was used to destroy the pipe and not just normal rust? Maybe the message on the pictures refers not to the stairs to the den, but to these stairs. Yep, green bottle under stairs, uh, these stairs. And this is a slider puzzle. Oh boy, let's see, I need to slide everything everywhere. Tough one. If you back away and restart, does that reset the puzzle? Okay, there we go. That seems to be making some progress. Maybe. Yep. Okay, move all these things out of the way. Oh, I need to move that one over just one more. Okay, move that to the right, move these up, all those up, got it. There's something inside. I am glad that you are getting your picture painted wearing your favorite shawl. It will be a beautiful painting because you look beautiful in that shawl. I forget the name of the stitch you used to make it, but I think it is amazing that you learned how to knit a whole shawl just by reading one book. I wish I could put my mind to things like you can. I am also glad that you like the handbag that I got you. I knew it would become your favorite on account of the pretty picture the beads make. I want to know all the things that you like so that I can make sure you always have them. I figure that way you will always want me around. Meet me on Friday at noon by the big picture rock. I love you, Dirk. So that would be this handbag. Something's missing. Nancy needs to recreate this handbag to get that flower. Also, the shawls and the painting inside the uh, inside the the main room. So we'll take a look at that. Remember when we were in Cappy's eating the crackers he orders special from California, and you said that from then on the crackers would be your favorite because they would always remind you of me. Well, I met a trader yesterday who had a whole wagon full of them, and I bought you four tins. I also bought a rock from him because this rock has been polished to show a picture that looks just like the landscape by one of our meeting places. He called it an agate and said that the picture was made by nature, but it looks so real I can hardly believe it. I am thinking of a way to surprise you with it because it is as special as you are. I will meet you Tuesday at 3 by the Three Arm Cactus. Your father has people watching for me all over the county. I guess you got some of your smartness from him. I love you, Dirk. That's another one of her favorites, those crackers. We're going to have to hunt down those crackers. I still don't know how you got a whole cake out to our last meeting place like you did, but it was the best thing I ever ate, and the prettiest too, what with that fancy flower you put on it. Now I think it is the best cake recipe in the world too. But nothing is as good as getting a letter from you. Whenever I see a flower like the one on your favorite letter paper, I think of you. 
I only steal from people who have plenty of money to begin with and deserve to be robbed. But if I could start over, I would forget about them and be a rancher or a farmer or miner or shopkeeper or whatever you wanted me to be, just so we could always be together. Be at Charlie's grave at sunset this Thursday. I love you, Dirk. Okay, so favorite letter paper, we'll get that on the third day of the game. So yeah, we need to track down all those favorite flowers. Oh boy. It's just gonna be a lot of work for Nancy. Looks like I'm back in the den. Yup. Let's see, where, where's the hidden lever? There it is. Ooh. Okay, that's that hidden hidden area. And then the shawl. Picture with her favorite shawl. I think we looked this up on the internet. I think we do. Uh, knitting stitches. And those are... No, those are agates. Did I look up agates accidentally? The daisy stitch. It's the daisy stitch. There we go. There's a little daisy. Daisies are cute. Okay. <clears throat> now we have to do work, everyone. We have to get those vegetables picked. So let's see. Beefsteak, those were the red ones. Golden queens, uh, they were gold. And then those ones, those were uh, the, the wrinkly ones. Uh, wrinkly ones as well. Um, Northern Lights was bicolored, and then Ivory egg was these, those ones. It's so hot, I should get these vegetables into Shorty right away. Let's see if he accepts it. Pick those vegetables for me yet? You betcha. Hey, there's stuff that's way over in here. Well, I'll just pitch it. In the meantime, go back out there and try again. What? What am I missing? Right. Uh... Not missing any of these, not really missing any of those. Guess it must be here. Um, yeah, I'm not really seeing anything I missed here. Uh, are you Old Ivory Egg, Northern? Uh, let's just call the Hardy Boys. What is it this time? Uh, excuse me? Nancy, hi. Sorry, I thought you were somebody else. Okay, someone in the chat here is saying I messed up on the Romano, so uh, let's get the remaining Romanos then. Thanks thanks for the hint. Who'd you think I was? Hey, Nancy. Hi, Frank. I thought you were this guy we're doing some work for. You guys are on a case? That's great. No, it's not. Turns out the guy is a bit neurotic. What do you mean? He wants us to track down his missing laptop. He left it in a restaurant. Only he keeps calling us. Yeah, like every two minutes. He's become a real nuisance. Maybe you should just quit. Can't. Of course you can. The guy's filthy rich. And if we find that laptop, he said he'd make us filthy rich. But the real reason we can't quit is he's the son of our mother's best friend. Yeah, if we quit, we'd never hear the end of it. Uh-oh, we've got another call. Let him leave a message for the nine millionth time. So, Nancy, tell us about the ranch. I could sure use a hint when it comes to using that piece of paper Dirk left for Francis to keep track of where the rock pictures are. Just look for petroglyphs, and when you see one, mark its position on the grid. Eventually, a message will appear, if you're careful. Catch you later. Stay safe. Watch out for varmints. I didn't really need help with that. I already knew that. Right, right, right. Okay, so let's check the web. Let's see what Romano is. Harvesting vegetables. So Romano here, okay. So the beans in the middle are ripe. So those ones are normal. Okay, okay. So the ones that aren't wavy for Romano. I think these things count as wavy, right? Maybe? It's so hot, I should get these vegetables into Shorty right away. Let's see. There's more ripe stuff out there than that. There is? Ugh. If you do this wrong, you get a game over sequence. Do you want to see the game over sequence? 
it looks like this. It's so hot, I should get these vegetables into Shorty right away. Pick those vegetables for me yet? You betcha. Oh no! You picked stuff that wasn't ripe yet again! Oh, well, there's only one thing to do. I don't understand, dear. Didn't Shorty tell you to only pick things that were ripe? Yes. But he says that you went out and picked vegetables that weren't ripe. Yes, I'm afraid I did. Oh dear, that garden is an important source of food for us. We simply can't have someone picking things willy-nilly and wasting perfectly good vegetables. Can we, Ed? We could wind up with scurvy. You're just not responsible enough for ranch life yet, dear. So why don't you go back to River Heights? And just as soon as you've developed the proper respect for produce, we'll invite you back. All right? Nancy doesn't respect produce enough. You need to respect produce, Nancy. Okay, let's get all the Romano and see if that's It's so correct. hot, I should get these vegetables into Shorty right away. It's like, how does Shorty even know there are extra ripe vegetables? Unless he's been outside to see the vegetables. In which case, why didn't he pick the vegetables himself? Where's that frying pan? Here, Shorty, here's a frying pan Pick those for you. vegetables for me yet? You betcha. Good for you. Now, if you just fill that egg basket for me again, we'll be all set. Woohoo! What do you know about the treasure that Dirk Valentine supposedly hid around here for Francis Humber to find? If I thought there was a snowball's chance in Tampa that Valentine had stashed any of his loot here, I'd be tearing this place apart. Why? What do you know about it? Nothing, really. But what makes you so sure he didn't stash any of his loot here? When I heard that rumor, I started reading everything about Dirk Valentine I could get my hands on. But the more I read, the more it sounded like he suckered Francis into believing he'd hidden something for her just to give people something to talk about when he was gone. Well, I'd better get going. Drop by any time. Okay, so now we need to collect some eggs for him. Okay, great. Please tell me that's uh, all the eggs I need. Got those eggs for me? Right here. Good for you. I need you to do one more thing. It's Tex's birthday. The Raleigh's told me to make him a cake. Now, if I make it, he'll throw a fit. But if you make it, he might actually appreciate it. So why don't you dig a cake recipe out of the recipe box and have at it? I don't care when you make it, just so it's done by the end of the day. The icing's already made. Could I get a canteen of water from you? You betcha. You're good to go. Well, I'd better get going. Don't be a stranger. Yeah, so Nancy has to do all the chores herself. It's just not fair. It's just not fair. If you don't like Nancy, if you don't like Nancy's, <laughs> Nancy's vegetable picking, then pick them yourself, Shorty. Pick them yourself. All right, okay, so now we get, uh, this tells us how much pinch. Three teaspoons equal a tablespoon. So tablespoon, okay, and then, um, five and one-thirds tablespoon equals one-third cup. Wow, that's a lot to remember. And one cup equals eight ounces liquid. I think we're ready for this. I think First we can do this. First thing I'll need part. to look at Kate is a mixing bowl. I can't get in there right now. I need to see the ingredients. So first is a cup of butter. So one stick is half a cup, so that means we need two sticks for one full cup of butter. Next we need two eggs. Well, that's easy enough. One. Two. Then one and two-thirds cup milk. So where's milk? Is it this thing? Okay, that's one-third cup. So one and two-thirds is gonna be five. So, 
five, and then four cups of flour. Oh no, how much is a pint of flour compared to a cup? Let's assume that's correct. Then one tablespoon baking powder. So it's three teaspoons equal one tablespoon, right? And then three and two and one thirds cup of sugar. There's one third, so that's gonna be seven of these things. Two, three. So people are saying a pint would be uh, two cups. Missed. <laughs> Nancy missed. Okay, three, um, four, five, six, seven. Pint is two cups, and I want four cups. That means I need two of these things. Do -do 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 -do. And then three teaspoons vanilla. Let's see if I can cook this correctly. One. Two. Three. I think we're done. So we're gonna bake it in this pan. Looks like I'm gonna have to guess how long to cook it and what temperature to use. Medium, 30 minutes, sound good. It's not cooked all the way through. I better bake it some more. 15 extra minutes. I should try a little, just to be sure. I should put that icing Shorty made on it. Woo! Got it first try! Hooray! What are these? I made you that flour Francis mentioned in her recipe. I cut all the pieces out of marzipan using her old forms, but I'll be darned if I can figure out how the pieces go. This is a jigsaw puzzle. It's a difficult one. Uh, the pieces snap into place when you get them correct, so that makes it easier. And this is one of those flowers, because we have to find all of Francis' flowers. I don't know where that one goes. Okay, this looks like it's the other leaf. There we go. That's not working, okay. Yes? It's a tulip! What's this? That's food coloring, so you can paint that marzipan flower. Yeah, the shorty made the frosting, but not the actual cake. Shorty's just kind of lazy when it comes to making cake, I guess. So I made your cake, shorty. Miss Nancy. How may I be of service? Well, I'd better get going. Pleasure talking to you. All done. Great. <laughs> We're not all done. No, guess who has chores for us? Tex. Tex has more chores for us. Not that my family's any of your concern, but my sister did work for the Raleigh's back in Phoenix. She got fired, she got mad, but she's over it. Okay? So it's just a coincidence that you ended up working for the Raleigh's too? Of course not. Janie got me curious, so I checked him out and wound up hiring on. They're decent people. Are you and your sister very close? Nope. Fact is, my sister can be kind of a flake. I'd have probably fired her too. Has anyone tried going after that phantom horse when it appears? Nope. Always something else going on. Like Ed Raleigh getting snake bit, or the pump house blowing up. Plus, that horse is fast. Probably couldn't catch it anyway. 
Is it okay if I go riding? Nope. Feed the chickens and the horses in the corral first. Could be fatal if you mess up. So don't. So maybe you could do it yourself because I don't know how to feed chickens or horses. Talk to you later. If you last that long. Oh, okay. Well, chicken feeding, two scoops of chicken chow. Is this chicken chow? I can't tell. Is that corn or is that chicken chow or, or what? I don't think that's enough. No, that was two scoops of chicken chow, Nancy. Okay, well, I guess that's not chicken chow if Nancy refuses to keep it. This is that pink cattle supplement. So let's say this is chicken chow. Good? Yay! Okay, let's see if that works. Let's see if that works. I hope it works. I hope it works. Okay, chickens, come and get it. Chickens don't appear to be dead yet, so I think we fed the chickens correctly. Okay, so this is uh, for cows, and this is for chickens, and that means this puzzle is mostly going to be working with these three things, corn, oats, and mixed pellets. Let's see if I can find which one is corn, which one is oats, and which one's mixed pellets. Oats? Oats, maybe? No, those could be oats. I'm gonna say this one is corn. And one is mixed pellets. Those those both look pretty pretty thoroughly mixed to me. Okay. Um so Dawn gets three oats and one and one half mixed pellets. So let's say these are oats. That's two. No, that's just one. Okay, so let's say these are oats. Two. Three oats, and then one and one half mixed pellets. There we go. So that was for Dawn. Which one's Dawn? I don't see a Dawn. Um... I see Bob, Clyde, and Ace. Clyde. It's for Clyde. Alright, Clyde, here you go. Okay, I think I did it. Yay. Okay, so I think I figured this out perfectly. So the one on the left is oats. Okay, so Bob needs oats. One corn and then one mixed pellet. So just one of everything, right? Dave wouldn't have wasted Nancy's time with pointless chores. I don't think that's enough. Oh, 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 not enough. Uh, okay. One more scoop. I don't think that's enough. Really? Okay, uh, three scoops then. I don't think that's enough. Trying again, trying again. Okay, I don't want to kill Bob, so... Let's go with one corn. Let's see how much corn is one. So two things of corn is one. Now we want one and a half mixed pellets. So that'd be this one. Okay, and then I needed two of oats. So is that two of oats, or is that one of... Uh, let's go for a second one. Yeah, there we go. That looks good. Okay, Bob, got your food. Okay. I hope this is good for you, Bob. Uh-oh, I dropped it. Uh... Move to the bottom of my inventory. No big deal. Yep, 
Yay! We did it. Woo! Okay, so next we need, um, ace. So one oats, half corn, three mixed pellets. Oh, and I need to put the bucket back. So half thing of corn. And it was three mixed pellets. So that's gonna be two scoops of the mixed pellets. And finally, one oats. Okay, I think that's it. So we never make we never make this one for uh, Frank. Dandy and uh, Cooney, is that? Kumi? Connie? Cookie? Cookie, let's go with Cookie. Let's say Cookie is that last one. Fantastic. So, we fed all of the horses. And none of them seem to be dying, so we must have done it correctly. Can I go riding now? Need something? May I go riding now? Oh, Bob's all yours. I set up some barrels and a sawhorse so you can do some barrel racing and practice roping. Whenever you're out there, I'll watch you and time you. If you get good enough, like, say, you get your time below ten seconds, and if you can lasso the sawhorse, like, say, four times out of five, I'll give you your very own lariat. You can practice as much as you want whenever you want. Just don't go walking off with my rope, because I'll be watching. Talk to you later. If you last that long. So, we have this challenge to get the rope. The rope that we need to go petroglyph hunting. Come on, Bob. <laughs> so let's go barrel Yeehaw! racing first. So simply just want to click and don't click too late. Yeah, yeah. 9.5. How about that? You did it. Woohoo! And then this is the tough one. So let's see. You want to wait till your lariat's got a full circle at the top and then just click your mouse. And yes! That's it. One, two, two. Gotcha. Okay, three times out of five. Very wobbly there. Gotcha. Okay, one more, one more. Got it. Gotcha. Congratulations. Alright! Now I can get my own lariat! I did the barrel race in under 10 seconds and roped the sawhorse 4 out of 5 times. Do I get a lariat? Yep, here you go. I'm kinda surprised at you. Why? Figured you'd be good for some laughs out there. You weren't. Well, I'm pretty but awesome, still hope that's why. This little vacation of yours ain't over with yet. Talk to you later! Just stay out of trouble. I'm just just so awesome. That's that's why I didn't fail. It's because I'm awesome. And let's talk to Dave before we head out on the trail. Hello, Nancy. Guess I'm gonna be blushing every time I see you now. Because of that cellar thing, you don't have to be embarrassed. As long as you level with the Raleigh's like you said you would. Actually, I'm kinda glad you came by. Something I need you to do for me if you wouldn't mind. You bet. This chicken coop's been a thorn in my side ever since I got here. The wire I need to fix the hole in the fence was supposed to be delivered today. But it's not here yet, and the Raleigh's just called and asked me to run an errand for them tonight. So if you could keep an eye out for that chicken wire and patch that hole as soon as it gets here, the chickens and I'd really appreciate it. Oh no, he's making me do chores. Will the wire get here before it gets dark? Doesn't look that way. But you still have to put it up, even if it means working at night. Just be sure to wear gloves. I'll leave my pliers out. If you have to do it at night, that's okay. There should be plenty of moonlight. You'll be able to see fine. Just make sure it gets done. Because if it doesn't, the coyotes are going to have themselves one heck of a banquet. And you're going to be in a lot of hot water. Great. Now, is there something I can do for you? 
I want to see the letter because we need to see the letter. Remember that there's a flower on her writing paper? Yep. We want that flower. May I see flower. that letter you said Francis Humber wrote to your great aunt? Sure. Got it right here. When I heard you were a detective, I started keeping it on me. Thought you might snoop through my stuff or something. Thanks for letting me see it. Dearest Cousin Ellie, my beloved Dirk is no more. I shall never see him again. And now you will never see me again, for I am on my way east, there to spend the rest of my life. I will never return to the territory of Arizona, not even when my father, whom I despise with every part of my being, has left this earth. But know this, sweet Ellie. Dirk told me that he had hidden something of great value, and that when all was in place, he would start me in pursuit of it. He was forever inventing fanciful ways to tax my brain. At least Dave asked nicely, rather than saying, Hey, you need to do my chores. He's like, Hey, could you do this for me? Do me a favor? Of course, Dave. Of course I will. And was quite clever himself. Then, thanks to my father, he was arrested. Perhaps he wrote me from jail, and his note was lost. Or perhaps he grew to hate me. But he never told me how to find what he had hidden, and I am too heartsick to care. If you can somehow find it, it's yours, my dear young cousin. Know, too, that I miss you terribly and always, always will. Francis. P.S. Enclosed is a picture of the vilest man ever born. Where was the jail that Dirk Valentine stayed in after he was arrested? Do you have any idea? Probably the one over in Dry Creek. It's a ghost town now. But the jailhouse and a couple other old buildings are still standing. At least they were last I saw. Could you tell me how to get there? On your way to Miriazzi's, look for the trail on your left that heads towards Shadow Mountain and stay on it till you get there. It's about an hour and a half's ride. This got something to do with the treasure? It might. Well, let me know if you need anything else. I'll let you get back to work. Take care. Well, an hour and a half. That's a really long ride. Yep, so Dirk left the clue inside uh, the jailhouse. Remember, he said he was going to leave a clue for her inside the jailhouse. So we're just going to we're, we're gonna go there and uh, try to intercept that clue inside the jail cell. Come on, Bob. Come on, Bob. Huh? <laughs> See, so uh, let, let's let's do the petroglyph challenge first. That looks like Mary Yazi. Yeah, I want to do the petroglyph challenge before going to the ghost town because there's a clue about the ghost town there. <laughs> so. Trying to do things in order, save some time, because it takes a while to get anywhere if you're traveling for an hour and a half. Poor Bob must be so exhausted. Okay, Nancy has her lariat. Go, Nancy. Come on. There. Yes! Woo! Okay, um moon thingy I can't get my map out now and then I'll just remember the petroglyphs I see and check my map later Z thingy okay so it was moon thingy and then Z thingy maybe I I think that's it okay so what about here so we have the the standing people there And then the sun was there, meaning these birds were there. Over there. Okay, on this side we have uh, the V. Let's see. Hmm. There are no hidden arrowheads right over here. Ha 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 ha! Found it. Beneath Cappy's keys, Pappy's name, please. Fantastic. So that's all the arrowheads from this area. Yep, there are ten arrowheads you need to find in all. So I guess there are three in this area, 
There's one on the ranch inside the shed. There is four at the trail's end. And there's going to be two in the ghost town. So there's a different amount of uh, arrowheads uh, depending on, uh, uh, on each spot. So as I said, three here, four here, two here, one here. Let's go back to Mary's so we can make that phone call. Wow, we're up to 500 viewers in this live stream. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Thanks for the support. Hope you're all doing well, having a fun time, even though everybody's currently quarantined by the coronavirus. Uh, Charlena Purcell knows who Pappy is. Charlena Purcell's office. Hi, this is Nancy Drew. May I please speak to Ms. Purcell? She told me to put you right through. She even told me to make sure you didn't have to listen to that recording again. You really rave. Hello, Nancy. So, what have you discovered? I came across a reference to someone whom Dirk referred to as Pappy. Probably his father, Kashmir Valentine. He was a blacksmith over in Prescott. Would Francis have known who he was? Oh, yes. Dirk worshipped his father. Which is ironic, because by the time Dirk was arrested, his father had pretty much disowned him out of shame. Talk to you soon. Look forward to it. Okay, so uh, now we're going to Dry Creek Ghost Town. This feels like a place I would have a Probably showdown. Probably just a bird. I'd have a shootout here, Nancy. Let's see if we can have a, a Nancy Drew shootout. And here's the sheriffs. Those look like gold bars, but they're not. They're bricks. Okay, so he was inside this jail cell. It's locked. So much for finding out what Dirk left in the cell for Francis. It's locked. So much for finding out what Dirk left in the cell for Francis. Yikes! The walls in there look like they could fall down any second. Yikes! The walls in there look like they could fall down any second. Too bad Nancy can't just, you know, purposely break down the wall. <laughs> I, 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 I guess. Meow, meow, meow. And here's a symbol. It looks like a B and it looks like a D. Oh, here's the general store. That's totally destroyed. We got the bank. The old bank, I believe. I don't know what this is. The old hanging place, maybe. Oh, arrowhead. And there's a JF. Here's an outhouse. Ah, scorpion. Okay, so you need to uh, not try to grab the scorpion, otherwise you die. You just need to go away, come back later. And there's, uh, there's... I don't even know what this place is. A post office? I think this is a post office? And this is the... Well, this looks like where everybody was buried. Huh. And here's Cappy's. Condemned by order of the sheriff. So we need to call the sheriff to get help. And now that scorpion's gone, so I can get the arrowhead. I have all ten arrowheads in this game. So there's a cheat you can do. Uh, I think you hit, you hit web, and then you hit the directory button. Yeah, yeah, so you hit the web and then the directory button. And that way you can call people. Normally, what you're supposed to do is go back to Mary Yazzie's and then call people. So, Sheriff, let's call Sheriff. Hernandez. Hello, Sheriff. It's Nancy Drew again. Hello, Nancy. What can I do for you? I noticed that you put a lock on one of the buildings in the ghost town. Yeah, the support beams in there are about to go. I was afraid some dumb tourist would knock into one of them and bring the thing down, and I'd wind up having to dig them out. If I'm real careful, do you think I could have the combination? It's just an old shack. There's nothing to see in there. I'm just curious. Amateur detective, remember? I'll lock the place back up when I'm done. Well... If you swear you'll be careful. I'll be extremely careful, I promise. Let's see, where did I put that combination? Ah, here we go. Nine, two, seven, four. Thanks for your help. My pleasure. Nine, two, seven, four, okay. Got 
got it. Woohoo! Here in the saloon. You want to take a look at this? An electrician's manual. Wonder what that's doing here. Very strange indeed. Now remember, Francis really liked these crackers. Even the crumbs are crisp. So that's the slogan for those crackers. Interesting. There's a hole in the ground. Uh, I, I mean, in the um, on the saloon part. Looks like someone's been hanging out in here. Yep, this is where those bank robber culprits have been hanging out. Mm, evil bank robbers. Okay, so beneath Cappy's keys, looks like I need to put in a Pappy's password. Pappy's names, please. So the father was Kashmir. Let's let's spell out that name. Kashmir. Maybe that's why Dirk became a an outlaw who steals gold. It's because his poppy's name was Cash. No, that can't be it. That's weird. Um, Cash. Okay, now let's try to get Mir. Oh no! Oh, I just messed up this. The 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 ones on the left. Oh well. Okay, let's see if I can get these ones on the right done. Yep, this is gonna be tough. Cashmere. Okay, I got Cashmere. And then, uh, let's see if I can get these ones correct. Oh, no, no, no. Master Sleuth Mode, why are you killing me like this? <laughs> Okay, I think I've got it. Yeah, I've got it. Take your forks and a crank to the BDI's ranch and make sure you see what's below. When you stick the forks in and give it a spin, off toward my treasure you'll go. So we need to take the forks and the crank to the BDI ranch. So the BDI's, that was the thing I was pointing out earlier, uh, in front of the sheriff's place, BD, it's the BDI's ranch. So I need forks and a crank. So I need to get those forks. And uh, I need to get the crank. The crank is just like randomly here, I think. There's a crank. Yay, we found the crank. And here's BDI's ranch. So what's below it? This thing. I'll bet Dirk Custom made this, which means I better not go messing around in there. Woo! The shape of this box looks familiar. Fantastic. Okay. So we need to go back to Mary's. Go to Mary Ozzy's, because that's where we'll get those forks. The tuning forks we saw earlier. So Mary, can I just have those tuning forks or not? Tuning forks. Maybe Dirk meant tuning forks. Hi, can I help you with something? I noticed some tuning forks over there. Would it be okay if I borrowed them for a while? Tell you what, if you go out and find me 10 arrowheads for this display I'm working on, I'll give them to you for free. You can put them in this. I already got 10 arrowheads. I already have 10 arrowheads. See? Yeah. So you do. It looks like I only need nine to finish this display. So here, keep this arrowhead. Thanks for your help, Nancy. Those tuning forks are all yours. <laughs> You're welcome. Do you know anything about the treasure Dirk Valentine supposedly buried somewhere around Shadow Ranch? I know it's a lot of hogwash. What makes you so sure? If I had a dollar for every lost mine or buried treasure story I've heard in the 30-odd years I've lived here, I'd have 10 horses, 2 cars, and possibly my own helicopter. It's nothing but a tall tale. Trust me. I won something that looks like a token when I played that game over there. 
What is it? They actually used those for something back in the 1880s, but I don't know what. I saw you riding earlier near Shadow Ranch. Do you ride around there a lot? You're mistaken. Shadow、Whoa. Ranch is private property. I never ride there. You must have seen somebody else. Jeez. All of a sudden, angry out of nowhere. Whoever I saw was riding a palomino that looked just like yours. I'm telling you, it wasn't me. So don't go telling people you saw me trespassing, because you didn't. Excuse me. Ow, ow, ow. Okay, did not mean to offend. Wait a minute, how did Nancy know she rides a palomino? I think. Maybe it's when you take a look at. I'm trying to take a look at those postcards. These. Yeah, here、What、we go. A beautiful horse. That's clearly Mary Yazi on that Palomino horse. Yeah, so we definitely saw Mary Yazi on that Palomino horse. Yeah, there's, there's no doubt about it. And let's call Charlene Purcell. Let's make some、uh, phone calls here. Charlene Purcell's office. Hi, this is Nancy Drew. Say no more. Hello, Nancy. What's the latest? Would you happen to know the brand name of crackers back in the 1880s, whose slogan was "Even the crumbs are crisp"? Not offhand, but I certainly can find out. Details like that are why so many of my books have won awards for historical accuracy. Have you read any of my books? No. Uh, no. But Aunt Beth has. She's a big fan. I realize that my novels aren't everyone's cup of tea, but it wouldn't hurt to at least give them a try, would it? No. In fact, I'll pick one up first chance I get. And I'll send you the name of those crackers first chance I get. Sounds good. She's actually going to email them. I came across、Nancy. something that looks like a very old token and has the words "Dry Creek Merchants" on it. Sounds like you have a piece of Dry Creek script. It was sometimes used in mining towns like Dry Creek in place of currency. Does it have a denomination on it? It says one and a half cents. Probably used for games. What kind of games? Believe it or not, they had some very primitive arcade-type games back in the 1880s. Some were quite entertaining. Especially for a cent and a half. Talk to you soon. You do that. Yeah, Charlena, really, really trying to hustle Nancy into buying her 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 books. Nancy's got no email except just Bess and George. Just Bess and George. Um, I'm gonna call Frank and Joe though. I'm gonna call Frank and Joe once more. Now what? Hi, Frank. Nancy, what a relief. I can't tell if you're happy to be talking to me or just happy not to be talking to Laptop Guy. <laughs> to be honest, it's a little of both. He calls every 3.25 minutes. You can set your watch by him. But the good news is, he's being so obnoxious that we're working faster than we've ever worked before. We're going to solve this case in record time. Like they say, every cloud has a silver lining. Uh oh, incoming call. Think it's him? 3.25 minutes. It's him. Want me to hang up? No. He can leave a message. So what's going on there? I wonder why they call it 3.25 minutes. So that's that's three minutes and 15 seconds, right? There's a real, honest to goodness ghost town near here. No way. Have you been there? Yep. And even though I went by myself, I'm pretty sure I wasn't alone. What do you mean? I saw something that makes me think bank robbers from Denver may be hiding out there. Bank robbers? That's the first time I've said that out loud. It does sound kind of nuts, doesn't it? You saw what you saw. How hot did you say it was down there? I don't know. Somewhere in the 90s, I guess. Maybe in the hundreds. So there you were, traipsing around a ghost town in 100 degree heat. I really don't think she was hallucinating, Joe. It was just a thought. Any hint as to what that riddle I found in the piano means? Let's see. If I were the BDI's ranch, where would I be? Maybe it would help if you tried looking at things in a brand new way. That's not a very helpful hint. Catch you later. See ya, partner. Ride 'em, cowgirl. Yeehaw! Woohee! Yeah, I'm gonna call the rallies now. Yeah, 3.25 minutes just sounds way cooler、Hello? than three and a quarter. Hi, Aunt Bet. I forgot to ask you before how Uncle Ed was doing. Well, he definitely has some kind of infection. I'm fine. So they've got him on antibiotics. We'll be here at least two more days. Oh dear, poor, poor. Poor Uncle Ed. Are you aware that there's a secret door behind the bookcase in the den? No. Oh my, you really are quite the detective. 
How did you discover that? Well, actually, it's a long story. What do you know about Dirk Valentine? Never heard of him. Do you know a Dirk Valentine? Isn't he that outlaw guy Shorty was carrying on about the night I got bit? I just wondered if you'd ever come across anything that belonged to him. Never. And I'd remember a name like that. Dirk Valentine. Sounds like a character from a Charlena Purcell novel. As it turns out, I talked to Charlena Purcell recently. Really? About what? About Shadow Ranch, actually. And about Dirk Valentine. She's done quite a bit of research on him. He was in love with Francis Humber, you know. Oh, my gosh. You mean Charlena Purcell is going to write a book that takes place on our ranch? She's still my palpitating heart. Ed, you tell her she's welcome to visit Shadow Ranch and do all the research she wants anytime she wants. Don't I get some say in this? No. No. No, you do not. I delivered that envelope to Mary Yazzie like you asked. She seemed a little upset when she read that you'd turned her down. Oh, I'm sorry to disappoint her, but if we sell that property to her, it would send a signal to other would-be buyers that we're interested in selling the ranch off bit by bit, and we're not. Is that the first time she's tried to buy it from you? She's been after us to sell it to her practically since the day we arrived. That was her first formal offer. I guess she thought if she put it in writing, we'd accept. Why does she want it so bad? I have no idea. The parcel she wants to buy is nowhere near her store, and there's nothing but rocks on it. Maybe someone else there at the ranch knows, but we sure don't. I noticed a letter in your roll-top desk from someone named Jane Nash. Oh, yes. She worked for us back in Phoenix, and we still own the clothing store. Unfortunately, she turned out to be totally unreliable, and we had to let her go. Her letter sounded almost threatening. Oh, she's harmless. Part of her problem was that she was all talk and no show. It was Ed's idea to hire her. She was a good salesperson. She was just not a very good person person. How old was she? In her 30s. She was married for a while, as I recall. I'll be in touch. All right, dear. Bye now. Okay, that seems like enough phone calls for now. Let's continue on with the adventure. Okay, so it goes here. This outline reminds me of something. Beady Eyes Ranch thing, then we put in the forks. Oh, so I put in the crank first. Let's put in the crank. Then you just click on the thing to get the forks. So, F R A and C E S. Francis. gives me this. Now go and peek beneath zebra rock, and a tractor of metal what's there will unlock. And a tractor of metal. So we need to get a magnet, basically. So Whoa. I'm getting a definite feeling I'm not alone. There's a shadow there inside the bank, and I wish Nancy could check out that bank, but she cannot. She cannot. So we're going back to Shadow Ranch and we're gonna grab that magnet. Looks like Mary Yazi and Tex? Okay, so let's see. We're gonna confront Tex, secretly meeting Mary Yazi. Tex, Tex is not here. Okay, well then, never mind. I can see Dave. Oh wait, no, it's evening time. Never mind, I don't see any Dave. Oops, Dave said to wear gloves. Tex must have turned the horses out for the night. Go inside here, grab the gloves. And we use the gloves here. Okay, well, then we'll see those gloves later in just a moment. So now we have this puzzle. 
That doesn't go there. That doesn't go there. Uh, let's see, we gotta get all the pieces together. That fits. Yes. That looked like it was good, but I guess it wasn't. That doesn't go there. Oh. Does this go here? That doesn't go there. Uh. That doesn't go there. This is... Hmm. Yeah, this is just a complicated puzzle. Oh, man. That doesn't look right. It's not that hard to figure out. It's just... These pieces don't go together well. That doesn't go there. That doesn't go there. Let me try to find a piece which goes here in the bottom right. Not that one. Not that one. Okay, I need to move all these pieces around so I can actually see. That doesn't go there. <laughs> Let's see. That doesn't go there. That doesn't go there. That doesn't go there. That doesn't go there. One of these pieces has to be in the bottom right, right? Correct? That looks right. Got it. Okay, we found that bottom right piece. Now let's find the next piece. That doesn't look right. Piece which goes next. Nope. Not that one. That doesn't look right. Why did Dave ask Nancy to solve this puzzle? Couldn't he have asked one of the other people on the ranch to do it? Somebody who's not me. Well, I guess he just happens to trust Nancy more than anybody else. None of these pieces even fit in that little place in the uh, bottom left. That looks right. Good, good. Got that. So let's see. Ooh, that looked really good, but... That doesn't look right. I thought it looked right. But uh, Nancy disagrees. That doesn't go there. No. Nope. That looks right. Good, good, good. Okay, so let's see what goes here on the left. This goes here. Woo! This goes here. Yay! Okay, we're, we're finally this making some progress. Here. After getting all those small pieces out of the way, we're getting the bigger pieces. This goes here. And puzzle solved. That doesn't look right. Okay, never mind. Puzzle solved! There! Woo! Sorry, coyotes. No chicken dinner for you tonight. Oh my gosh, my gloves. They're glowing. That powder in the ghost town. Yep, so that's how the horse is glowing. They have magic glowy powder in the ghost town. Coated the horse with magic glowy powder. And oh no! Oh dear, ow! Ow, ow, ow! How is Nancy not getting hurt right now? You saw the phantom horse again? Was anything sabotaged? The power lines going to the ranch house were either cut or were otherwise disconnected from the house. You mean you don't have electricity? We have a generator. It's pretty noisy, but it sure beats the alternative. But listen to this. When I was exploring the ghost town, I got this powdery stuff all over my gloves. And last night, when it was dark, my gloves were glowing. Glowing? Like the horse? Exactly like the horse. Maybe it glows because someone rubbed some kind of phosphorescent powder all over it. And if you found that stuff in the ghost town, that must be where he or she has been hanging out. Yup. Looks like our saboteur definitely has an accomplice. So what are you going to do? You know darn well what she's going to do. She's going to go back out to the ghost town by herself immediately, if not sooner. And another thing. Dave was suspiciously absent during all the excitement last night. You better be careful, Nancy. If he and whoever's out at the ghost town are working together, they may decide you're a threat. I'll be okay. I'm more worried about you guys. Well, the fog has finally lifted, and they say we will definitely get out of here today. What they won't say is when. I found a half-burned note that had a bunch of gibberish on it in the fire pit. Gibberish? You mean, like a code? 
That could be why someone tried to burn it, so no one else at the ranch would ever know what it said. Maybe it was about the sabotage. That's just what I was thinking. So just find a way to decode that message, and you'll be all set. I found an old beaded handbag that may have belonged to Francis Humber. Was there anything in it? No, but if it's the bag that Dirk mentioned in one of his love letters, it could hold some sort of clue. What does it look like? Well, there's a bird on it, but the beads have completely fallen off this one section. However, it does have the name of the manufacturer at the bottom. It was made by the Chicago Mercantile Company back in 1881. That's one of the companies in my book. Is there anything else on it? Yeah, some kind of number. HB3941. Maybe that's what bead pattern it is. There's a bunch of phone numbers in this book. Maybe we can track down the pattern for you. That'd be great. Like I said, it could be pretty important. Especially if the part that's missing turns out to have something to do with flowers. We'll get right on it. That's it for now. Thanks for calling. Bye, Nan. Yeah, so that's, uh, that's an optional puzzle you don't have to do. But you're going to refix, you're going to get a bunch of beads from Ariazi and then put the beads on here to see that the flower is... Something's missing. It's a poppy. It's a poppy flower. Oh, and the attractor of metal. Uh, magnet. I'll take that one. Thank you very much. Nancy! I figured after last night you'd be long gone. I know I would be if I were you. When the power company turned off the power, did they say when they'd be out to fix the lines? No. They had no idea when they'd be able to send somebody out here. And if that generator goes, I could be cooking in the dark for days. Weeks. Well, not weeks, because no way am I staying here that long. I'm so freaked out now, I'm not sure I can last one more day. You can't leave, Shorty. That's exactly what whoever's behind all these accidents wants. Listen to you. Cool, calm, optimistic. I'm a wreck and you're a rock. Of course, you're also dead wrong and totally deluded, but I'm still impressed. Want me to do anything before I go riding? Same old, same old. If you bring me all the ripe stuff from the garden, I'll give you a basket to fill up with eggs. And once you're done with that, you'll be good to go. Well, I'd better get going. Drop by any time. Okay, sounds good. So we need to do everything. Do you think I could have a piece of cake? Sure, help yourself. Tex really liked it, by the way. Mm. Yum, yum, yum. Cake. I'll let someone else eat the last piece. Ah, oh, it's clearly two extra pieces of cake, Nancy. You can have one. That horseshoe wasn't there before. Maybe the ghost horse threw it while it was running away last night. Gonna pick some vegetables. I'll just take everything here. Yep. Just steal all the veggies. It's so hot, I should get these vegetables into Shorty right away. Pick those vegetables for me yet? Oh no, this is gonna be game over, you betcha. isn't it? Oh no! You picked stuff that wasn't ripe yet again! Oh, well, there's only one thing to do. I don't understand, dear. Didn't Shorty tell you to only pick things that were ripe? Yes. But he says that you went out and picked vegetables that weren't ripe. Yes, I'm afraid I did. Oh, dear. That garden is an important source of food for us. We simply can't have someone picking things willy-nilly and wasting perfectly good vegetables. Can we, Ed? We could wind up with scurvy. You're just not responsible enough for ranch life yet, dear. So why don't you go back to River Heights, and just as soon as you've developed the proper respect for produce, we'll invite you back. All right? Darn it. Okay, well, we'll try that again. I think these were the Northern Lights. Um, the old Ivories look good. The Romanos are fine, because that was like opposite of the other one, right? So these are the black turtles. Golden queen and beef steak. It's so hot, I should get these vegetables into Shorty right away. Pick those vegetables for me yet? You betcha. Oh no! You pick stuff that oh. won't drop yet again! Come oh, on. Well, there's only one thing to do. I don't understand, dear. 
Didn't Shorty tell you to only pick no, things that were rotten? No, no, stop. St yes. Just stop. But he just says stop. that you went out and picked no, vegetables that no, weren't rotten. No, just stop. Yes, stop. I'm no, afraid I don't, I I don't know. Oh, now. Dear. That garden is an important source of food for us. We simply can't have someone picking things willy-nilly and wasting perfectly good vegetables. Can we, Ed? We could wind up with scurvy. You're just not responsible enough for ranch life yet, dear. So why don't you go back to River Heights, and just as soon as you've developed the proper respect for produce, we'll invite you back. All right? Not a fan of those. Okay. Let's just grab all these. It's so hot, I should get these vegetables into Shorty right away. So I did the right-hand side. Let's see if that's good. There's more ripe stuff out there than that. There is? Okay. So I got half of it done. Let's see these. Let's get the northern lights. It's so hot, I should get these vegetables into Shorty right away. Please tell me that's everything. Pick those vegetables for me yet? Yes. You betcha. Good for you. Now, if you just fill that egg basket for me again, we'll be all set. Well, I'd better get going. Pleasure talking to you. Is this why they fired Texas sister? She picked unripe vegetables. I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised. Okay, over here. That's the chicken of doom. We don't want to get attacked by the chicken of doom, so we have to leave and go back. Oh, chicken of doom is still there. I guess we have to go inside. You can find more eggs than that. You bet I can. Okay. I'm sort of burnt out on chores. Okay, here we go. We got the egg from the Chicken of Doom. Give these eggs to Shorty. Got those eggs for me? No problem. Good for you. Anything I can do for you now? Could I get a canteen of water from you? You betcha. You're good to go. Well, I'd better get going. Drop by any time. So... Uh, let's see. So we're going to use our magnet at Zebra Rock. Let's go riding there. Actually, I think this might be a game over sequence. I think, I think Tex yells at you um, if you go riding without asking him first. All right, that's it. Now I made it real clear that you ain't allowed to go ride unless you check with me first. So take that saddle off, cause from now on, only way you're gonna get anywhere around here is on your own two feet. Ugh, Tex, 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 Tex. You're such a meanie. Fine, let's talk to him. Need something? I found a horseshoe outside that wasn't there yesterday. I was thinking that maybe the phantom horse threw it. It's got a rock wedged in it. So it does. Looks like the kind of rock you'd find out by the ghost town. So, you've been out to Dry Creek? Yep. Last time I was out there, my horse acted real strange. He even tried to throw me. It was like he saw something I couldn't, something he didn't like. Something that was telling him to stay away. You're not suggesting he saw a ghost, are you? I'm just telling you what I know. You don't want to hear what I got to say, then quit asking me stuff. Did I see you and Mary Yazi riding together? Me and Mary Yazi? Of course not. Why, I ain't said more than ten words to her since I got here. You're imagining things. Is it okay if I go riding? Nope. I took a bridle apart, oiled the pieces, and left them in that can on the shelf. You can't ride till you get the bridle put back together right. I put the bit next to the can. Talk to you later. If you last that long. Oh, okay. Okay, there's the head stall. Now, let's see. How do I know what a bridle's supposed to look like? I don't know. I'm just a random city gal. That looks right. Oh, hey, that looks right. Let's see, 
Does this go here? Maybe this? This goes here. Yay! I don't know how Nancy knows these things. She's just really smart when it comes to uh, horse stuff. I'm getting stuff. there. Let's see. This one here? This goes here. Yeah. This goes here. Perfect. Good. Fixed it. Need something. I put that bridle back together. Now may I go riding? Yep. Yay! Talk to you later. Just stay out of trouble. So now we can go horseback riding. Now we've done all the chores. Come on, Bob. <laughs> and uh, Zebra Rock right over here. This puzzle you need to move all these pieces into place so silicon uh, goes here in the bottom left and is there a wall here I guess there's a wall here okay yes yes of course there's a wall there. Okay. Da -ha. Metal piece picked up, metal piece dropped. Ugh. Okay, moving it along here. Yes. So this is where the pink would go. Pink is actually going to be the, the manganese. Oh, boy. Yep. Nancy's just doing everybody's chores forever now. Though this isn't a chore, though. This is not a chore. This is just terrible. Um, yeah, here we go. Got it. One. Now I need to get this piece all the way over. So this one slides all around the bottom. Can I bring it up here? Yes. Please tell me I could go from here to here. No, I can't. Why would I be able to do that? Oh, come on, come on, come on. You can do this. Yes? Yeah? Okay. got that really mean wall which is in the way come on come on come on get out of there get out of there peace come on come on I'm trying to trying to get you out okay down and around oh do I not have the piece I'm going to drop the piece there for now. Okay. Iron. Iron is bottom right. We'll do iron. Let's 
go over here on the left. Yeah. You can imagine imagine uh, Dirk Valentine was like, Oh, I like doing this. I like vexing your brain. Yeah, well, I don't I don't like it. <laughs> Oh dear. Okay, so bottom right. So that means I'm sneaking in through here, yes. That didn't work last time. Okay, so I need to sneak in maybe through here. Everybody in the live stream chat is asking me to cheat. I'm not cheating. We're solving this puzzle the intended way. Which is, uh, difficult. Okay, come on, come on. Over here on the left. Whew. Okay. That piece wouldn't be moved. Okay, let's see if we can get the copper into place. Yes. Okay, there's the copper. It goes around like this. Here we go. It's a sort of like a, a staircase there, I think, in this spot. Let's see if I can find that exit. I need to it's 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 a little tricky. So moving it left. Okay, I've got the piece. Up doesn't work. Right doesn't work. Okay, go a little bit down and then right. Yeah, there we go. That's the entrance. Great. So that was the one I needed to find here for iron. So, yeah. Left. Down there. And then iron can just snap into place here. Woo! Okay, so copper, bringing copper around. I think it's it's through this. And then hidden exit entrance over here. Got it. Okay, so now manganese. Um, okay, so... Let's get it over here on the left side. Move down. Ooh. I'm trying to get this piece here. Okay. We're going to try this again. Okay. We're trying to move it to the left. There appears to be a wall everywhere there to the left. Found it. Okay. Down at the bottom is the hole. Where's the piece? Okay, it's here. Can I move it upwards? Where am I moving it upwards? I need to move it upwards. Okay, move it upwards through here. Lost it. Okay. Where's that piece? Here. It feels like I'm on the corner of uh, doing this. Yep. I hope Nancy does pick this 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 piece up. I mean this this puzzle up. Got it. Okay. Got it through. See. Yay. Got it through. See. It wasn't so bad. Um. Move it up here. Of course, there's another wall here. Yeah, okay. 
Down here. Down there. Got it. Solved it. So now you need to create all of her favorite flowers. All of her favorite flowers. Okay, it's the red one on top. It's gonna be this one here. This rose. And then this yellow thing. No, this is white. This is gonna be the daisy. And this is gonna be the flower that was the marzipan one. Got it. Looks like a secret compartment. Yay! If you hope this task to ever complete, you must wind her up so she'll move her feet. If you hope this task to ever... Okay, we solved that puzzle. Hooray! Yay, we did it. Whew! Okay, back uh, now to uh, Dry Creek. Dry Creek. Going back to the ghost town, everyone. Oh boy, I, I need a break after that magnet puzzle. I'm about ready to fall over. Okay, so here we go to Cappy's. And the culprits have Maybe moved. this is the key to the jail cell. See, they left the key to the jail cell after moving out. That's convenient. And uh, thwack. Uh, I'm in the jail cell. And yeah, here we go. So, um... This is a puzzle. Uh, let's see. This is A. And I think this is B. Under. This is like under. U. So far, so good. N. D. E. R. I'm getting there. Under. Bank. Um. Wall? No, that's not it. Okay, so what's the twelfth letter of the alphabet? A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L. Lamp. Under bank. Very good. Lamp. Under bank lamp. Woo! We did it. Okay, we solved that puzzle. I'll bet that's the key. And that's the key. Yeah, so the culprits conveniently locked up Nancy in an area she wanted to visit. Although, obviously, it would have been nicer for Nancy if they had just left the key and she didn't get locked up here. That would have been very, very nice for Nancy. I have enough of those. Unlimited supply of bricks here as Nancy throws them against the wall. Okay, this angle at that power. Got it. And you need to lasso it a second time. Lasso the chair a second Come time. Come to mama! Yee! Got it. Let's see. Use the key on the lock. And Nancy escapes. Whoever clobbered me must have dropped this. So to hide a message, this. take the last two letters of a word, reverse them, and then add them to the start of the word. Use these pictures in place of the word. Anyone talks about this, they get a load of buckshot. Dirk. Yep, so this is the, the hidden message we got in the cellar. Uh, so the culprit found this in the cellar, and that's what this message is. We'll need more supplies if something check again, Dirk. It, it's just a generic thing about... This. About Dirk's secret puzzle. So underneath the bank lamp, uh, the bank was over here. Please be the There's key. There's a letter down there. Did you know you can play some games more than one way? You can, and I'll tell you how. Use the ring that's the twin of Ellie's your cousin, 
in Cappy's fun machine now. So we need to find that ring, and then we'll use it on, uh, yeah. We'll, we'll find the ring, and then we'll use it on Cappy's fun machine. Yeehaw! You do have to take off the uh, the, the stuff. Tex I said to put the saddle and bridle back where I got it. Nancy won't carry them. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Okay. Getting close to the end of the game now, I believe. Only, what, three hours in? <laughs> Hello, Nancy. Thanks for fixing that fence. What can I do for you? Did your great aunt, by any chance, leave you a ring? Sure did. It was her most prized possession. In fact, I got it right here. Seems to me Aunt Ellie said Francis had one just like it. I keep it on me for good luck. I know this is a lot to ask, but do you think I could borrow it for a while? Borrow it? What for? It's kind of a long story. Just take care of it, okay? Will do. Last time I was in the ghost town, somebody clobbered me over the head and locked me up in the old jail. That's terrible. Did you see who did it? Well, no, I was attacked from behind. No, but I have a sneaking suspicion it may be bank robbers who've been using the town to lie low. You shouldn't go there anymore, Nancy. Something bad's obviously going on, and you should just stay away. And call the sheriff, of course. I'll let you get back to work. Ma'am? I guess I should call the sheriff. Yeah, that's a good that's a good point. Let's call the sheriff. Hernandez. Hello, Sheriff. It's Nancy Drew again. Hello, Nancy. Driving out the Shadow Ranch is getting to be a nightly thing for me. You got power out there yet? No, but fortunately we have a generator. So what can I do for you? Well, when I was in the ghost town this morning, someone knocked me out, then locked me in a jail cell. Are you all right? I managed to escape, but I'm more convinced than ever that someone's been hiding out there. Someone who ties in with what's been happening at Shadow Ranch. Did you see anyone? Unfortunately, no. Well, I'll take a drive up there and look around first chance I get, okay? Wait, you can drive there? Thanks for your help. Just doing my job. Yes, Dave gave Nancy a ring. He sure did. Dave, Dave liked Nancy so much, he put a ring on it. So let's, let's go riding off to uh, the, the ghost town. Come on, Bob. <laughs> Alrighty. Ghost town, ghost town, all the way. Ghost town, hooray. Okay, so over here to Cappy's. Use it on the fun machine. Okay. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold on a second. Didn't mean to press that. I meant to grab this ring. Hmm. Something goes here. Hmm. Let's see. Where do I put the ring? Do I put it up here instead? Yeah, you put the ring up there. And where's that coin? Put the coin in. And I'm going to save my game here. Save my game, Shadow Ranch. We'll save it. And go. We're trying to make nice friends. Not El Diablo or Rotten Rudy. Uh, Gentle Jane, she's nice. El Diablo is not nice. If I keep playing, I'm bound to win eventually. Yeah, that's not fun, though. So I'm just going to reload. Very important to, to save here and then just reload. Okay, nice people. Percy, um, do you think the mule is nice? Let's go with the mule. 
one! Woo! Second try, everybody! Second try! So we got the thing to wind up her feet. Right here. On the paper you got when you first began, draw lines between the pictures shown here. If you draw them in order, you'll find something you need behind the picture that you make appear. Woo! Okay, so we need to draw those lines. Ah, we, we just follow those instructions that, that we were told. Let's see if we can remember them all. Oh, oh no, okay. This is gonna be tough, isn't it? It's gonna, let's see, here. Hmm. I need to wind this up once more. I'll just take a picture with my phone. There, okay. I've got, I've got my phone, okay. My phone, I took a picture. Now let's see if we can solve this puzzle. So we start with this one, to the hand, to um, this one, to the letter U, sort of like this, to the bird. This is making me think that Dirk drew these, uh, these, these things himself. These weren't actually these these weren't weren't actually uh petroglyphs left left by natives. These these were probably just done by Dirk. Cuz it would make v, no sense. For Valentine, no doubt. It would make no sense if if the natives created a uh, petroglyphs with which perfectly matched this puzzle, right? Okay, back to Cougar Bend. Basically, Dirk was just dumping graffiti on all these uh, places, calling them hieroglyphs. I do remember when I went to Arizona and went to their petroglyph, petroglyph place? There were definitely some petroglyphs which are uh, more modern graffiti. Yes. So the V petroglyph. That's got to be Dirk's, At right? At Charlie's grave, hold this up, look around, and you'll see the trail to a gift to you from me. It's a rock. Too bad it's so sky. At Charlie's grave. It's a picture agate. Okay, let's go. Let's see, I need to turn to the side here and just go down. Mary Yazi will be able to fix that agate for me. Okay, Mary, can you fix the uh, picture agate? Hi, can I help you with something? Oh, oh, wait, but first, romance time. Tex told me about, you know, you and him. He did? Yeah. Yeah, I kind of tricked him into telling me. I don't believe it. He swears me to secrecy, then goes blabbing it to some teenager? Oh, well, it was bound to come out sometime. That's kind of what Tex said, too. I mean, we're in love. What's the big deal? You're what? Wait a minute. He didn't tell you anything, did he? You tricked me. Oh, you're good. You are good. Yeah, secret love with Mary and Tex. Is that what you were doing on the ranch when I saw you, meeting Tex? Yes. See, Tex knows the Raleigh's and I have been arguing about that property I want to buy. He's afraid if the Raleigh's find out about us, they'll think he's collaborating with the enemy and fire him. I don't really think they'd do that. They're, they're kind of nice people. Why are you so interested in that property? There's a whole bunch of petrified wood on it. 
Tex discovered it. Every so often, he'll bring some pieces in, and I'll use it in my jewelry or try to sell it. Anyway, Tex and I are in love. We tried to keep it a secret, and we blew it. You know, for a city slicker, you got a lot of country smarts. <laughs> I can't believe she fell for that. Like, Tex is 100% not the kind of person who would ever blab a secret. Ever. He rarely talks, you know? I found this piece of rock in the desert. I'd really like to get the scuff marks off of it. Looks like it's been polished before. If I put it in the polisher, it'll buff up in no time. Let me see what I can do. It's a picture agate. Great. Thanks, Mary. I do wonder why Nancy stands outside while she uh, uses the picture agate. It was great talking to you. Catch you later. It seems a bit odd. I don't know why Nancy doesn't just hang around. It only took her like five seconds to uh, to clean it up. Anyway. Hey, we're on a flight to Phoenix. All right. The bad news is the flight's been delayed. Oh. oh no, why? The plane that's supposed to fly us out of here is sitting on a tarmac in New Jersey waiting to take off. It's like 93rd in line or something. So what are you doing, Nance? Have you figured out who's behind the sabotage yet? No, but I have a gut feeling that whoever it is is after Dirk Valentine's treasure. Which means if I can find a treasure, I can put a stop to the sabotage. And I think I'm in the home stretch. All I have to do is go where the picture on this agate takes me and I'll be all set. The picture on this what? It's a long story. I'm tempted to ask you to wait until George and I get there, but I know that would be like asking an Olympic speed skater to slow down. Just be prepared to tell us all about it. All right, I'll see you guys later. Have fun. Wish you were here. Just kidding. Everybody is saying Nancy had to step outside because the, the, uh the buffer was far too loud. I don't know about that. Ma Mary could handle working it. She was right next to the machine. Okay, so you people can see everything. You can see me moving the mouse around. There's no lag. Yes. Yes. Okay, great. Good. Um, <clears throat> then let's continue. So the picture agate. You go by Charlie's grave. That would be this grave here. And just use the agate on the grave. Then spin around. Spinning, spinning, spinning. Aha! Uh -huh. That tree looks just like the one on the agate. I think I'll grab Bob and head out in that direction. So we're going to question mark. Woo! Stay here, Bob. I'll keep going. This is a really cool looking place. We only visit it once, but it, I think it's pretty cool for a place we only visit once. It's the uh, it's the hidden cliffside now, village, right? Now, how am I right? going to get up there? Hmm. Use your lariat, Nancy. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, I'm pretty awesome. Ancient I can do cliff this. dwellings. Awesome. Ancient cliff dwellings. So this is how you get through. This is how you get through. You're gonna have to match the colors. No, not the colors. Where, where's Dirk's note? So yellow, red, blue. He's got those colors. So I've got the colors written down here. So we're gonna go uh, brown, lime. So brown, and then lime. Oh, is this a key? No, that's not a key. Look in the orange room for a key. Where's orange? I don't see orange. I'm already lost. Okay, brown, lime, key. We need to find all these keys. Look in the orange room for a key as well. And get back to where we were. So it's orange, lime, and then yellow. Yellow, red. Yellow, red, and then key. Blue, orange, and lime. So blue. Orange. There's, there's orange right there. And lime. 
limes right here. So blue, orange. Ah, blue, orange, lime. Yellow, brown, blue. Yellow, brown, and blue. Lime, orange, blue. Lime, orange, blue. Lime, orange, blue, brown. And uh, there's a key. I don't see any key here. Yep, yep, there's a key. So lime, orange, and red. This is just a maze, isn't it? Blue, yellow, and the lime. Blue, yellow, lime. So that's blue, yellow, lime, blue. Key near this door. And I do want to point out this. Yikes! Falling down there would not be fun. Oh no! Yeah, you want to look out for that. You you might fall there, and now I'm lost. Uh, let's see. Where do I go here? Uh, let's see. Green? Yeah, green. Okay, green over here to the exit. Woo! Can Nancy run that way? No, that's a wall. Okay, she can't go that way. I think I've got all the keys. This goes here. Good job, Nancy. This goes here. That looks right. Sure does. This goes here. This goes here. So with all the keys in place, you can do it. Francis Hart Valentine. And he made his little V symbol out of gold things. There it is. Dirk Valentine's treasure. Solid gold hearts. Aww, they're so cute. So we found the treasure. It's a bunch of gold. And we also found a culprit. Uh-oh. Why, hello, Nancy. Find the treasure yet? So you're the one who's been sabotaging the ranch. That's right. Here my buddies and I went to all that trouble. Wrangling that horse. Busting that pipe, cutting those wires trying to scare people off the ranch so we could tear the place apart looking for the treasure. When all we really had to do was what I just got done doing. Follow you. You went to a lot of trouble for nothing. The treasure's gone. Well, now, I don't believe you, Miss Nancy. Oh, and by the way, it's too far to make it back to the ranch without a horse, and I just ran yours off. Which means you, to use an old cooking expression... Our toast. That's what you think. Looks to me like the only way out is the way you came in, Nancy. So, ready or not, here I come. Shorty, no! Yep, so Shorty's the culprit, and we need to find There's a way to There's gotta be a way to stop Shorty. Think! I'm getting close! If you take too long or if you go in the wrong area, Shorty will attack you like this. Here's Shorty. Looks to me like the only way out is the way you came in, Nancy. So, ready or not, here I come. So what you're actually supposed to do is, uh... I'm getting close! Calm down, Shorty. Switch the door markers. So we're gonna switch lime with Just went through another with door, red. Nancy! There. Now I better one. hide. Only four to go. Last door. After I get the treasure, I'll deal with you. Whoa! You switched door markers on me, didn't you? That was downright mean, Nancy. I could have hurt myself. At least you can do is help me off of here. How about it? Nah, I think I'll go get the sheriff and let him help you off of there.
Dear Hannah, it turns out that Shorty had ridden to the cliff dwellings on the Phantom Horse, which was really just a trick horse that a friend of one of his bank robber buddies had trained. Since my horse was gone and it was getting dark, I wound up riding it back to the ranch so I could call the sheriff. You should have seen the look on everyone's face when I rode up on a glowing horse. It looks like the phosphorescent powder that they used to make it glow was harmless, but Tex is taking care of the horse until he's sure it's okay. Mary Yazzie has straightened everything out with the Raleigh's, and now she comes over a lot, mostly to see Tex. He turns beet red whenever she's around. It's actually kind of cute. Speaking of cute, Dave confessed to the Raleigh's as soon as they got home from the hospital, just like he said he would. They not only forgave him, they even offered to split the treasure with him if it turns out they can keep it. Sheriff Hernandez is looking into it. The best part is, Bess and George finally got here, and we've been having a ball. Here's a picture of the three of us on our horses. Unfortunately, Dave took it. Guess he didn't realize his finger was over the lens. <laughs> See you in a couple of days. Love, Nancy. P.S. I started reading the Charlene Purcell novel Aunt Bet has, and you know what? I can't put it down. Yep. Do, 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 do. Hey, Sassy Detective! Congratulations on solving the secret of Shadow Ranch case. Dave and Tex got together and nicknamed you Hawkeye for reading everything. If dreams can come true, what about curses? Well, in my next mystery adventure, you can find out for yourself, if you dare. I've been invited to a creepy old castle in England to find out who or what is terrorizing its residents. Could it be that the spirit of a centuries-old witch has returned to seek revenge? And why, after 300 years, has the Beast of Blackmoor returned to prowl the moors again? The answers to these and many other dark secrets will be uncovered in my next case, The Curse of Blackmoor Manor. Coming soon. <laughs> so that's the next game in the Nancy Drew series. Let's talk a little bit more about Secret of Shadow Ranch, shall we? Oh man, so Shorty is the culprit. I feel like it makes sense he's the culprit. He gave Nancy the worst chores ever. Definitely those chores are not fun. So, you know, if, if he ended up being go a good guy, that'd be sending mixed messages. Like, he, he's responsible for so much pain and suffering, and yet he's actually a good guy? You know, okay, in real life, good people sometimes cause pain and suffering, but not on purpose, and Shorty was purposely trying to make Nancy do all his chores. So, is he a good guy who's just lazy, or... I, I don't know. I don't know. But yeah, so, uh... That would have been so cool, Nancy riding the phantom horse to, to show up at the ranch. Super cool. And that was a cool, cute transition, Nancy's like, oh, speaking of cute, Dave, ooh, he's so cute. Too bad Dave isn't very good at taking pictures. It's okay, he tried, he tried his hardest. I wonder if the Hardy Boys ever found Laptop Guy's laptop. I hope they did. Shorty Thurman, Mineral Map Guy, Radio Voice, and Charlene's assistant, Jonah Von Spreken. Just doing all the voices in this game, apparently. Oh, lots of voices here, too. Sheriff Humber, Radio Voice, and Dirk Valentine. Fancy music. Yes, I do like the music in this game. Okay. So it looks like we're getting near the end of the uh, special credits here. Hidden Valley Ranch. So they uh, visited a nearby ranch in order to learn how ranches work. That's interesting. Yep, 
Yep, so that game was based off of one of the Nancy Drew books, Nancy Drew number five, Secret of Shadow Ranch. Uh, one of the, it's the best-selling Nancy Drew book of all time, and it's on, like, the list of, like, the top ten best-selling children's books of all time. I don't know who keeps track of, uh, you know, how much, how many copies a book sell, but it's definitely sold over, mm, a million copies, probably? I don't know. Anyway... It makes for a pretty exciting game, don't you think? It was an exciting game. I liked it, except for the chores. I don't really like the chores. I like the mystery. And what was that one puzzle which totally destroyed me? Oh, that magnet puzzle. Ugh. So this game has a lot of puzzles which totally destroy me. But other than that, I'd say it's a pretty fun game. The characters are great. Shorty does yodeling. It, uh, what more could you ask for? And Nancy has a cute horse named Bob. Fantastic. So thanks, but thank you very much for watching my uh, video walkthrough, everybody. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed watching my live stream for the 200, uh, 2020 Nancy Drew Games Mega Marathon.